before the video starts guys you already know i gotta hit y'all with a motivational video and for people that need the motivation if you're feeling down or whatever Bye guys anyways with that being said at the end i'm gonna show another motivational video just to show the duality of things clown boys is that chris, is that chris? what's up guys welcome back to the podcast that goes unnoticed welcome back to the spot don't make it hot we love you even if you love us not I. and welcome to episode 103 shout out to all the listeners on spotify apple Podcasts, instagram facebook youtube tiktok and patreon patreon's Y'all get your first shout out in the end. And I just want to say, always going to show love to y'all. <coughs> shout out to everybody that's been showing love on a recent episode. And also, we just dropped um, a Q&A on our second channel, making making this announcement right now. We have a second channel now where, where we're going to be posting IRL content, any type of content that we want. We're just going to have fun over there. So if you want to support us, and if you fuck with us, go subscribe to that channel right now. First link in the description and uh yeah guys just thank you for all the support and it's pretty much just gonna be like not like it's gonna be no set like specific videos we're gonna post it's just gonna be our creative mind being spelled out on a youtube channel there's no category y'all gonna get a random video every single time it's never gonna be a all right so this is the type of youtubers they are now we have two different types if y'all want to just watch you know like the same shit all the time every week well it's not the same stuff but the same style podcast Y'all can watch that if y'all want to watch like a little mixed, you know, different shit. Second channel. And also, second channel as well. you guys literally get basically two videos from us every week now type shit. But uh, yeah, that, that's something big for us. And also, I want to make this announcement because this video is dropping um, on Thursday, uh, this upcoming week, which is the 18th. And on Friday, so if you're listening to this the next day, just look be on, be on the lookout on Instagram everywhere. We are dropping merch. There's gonna be a, a video as well with it, so a video promo with the with the the merch drop that I edited myself and stuff. So I'm really really proud of it, and I hope y'all fuck with it. And yeah, bro, I, I I I'm just excited for this shit. I've been waiting this, waiting for this shit for a long time, and you guys are finally gonna be able to rep us fully, and yeah, can't fucking wait. It's gonna be it's gonna be fire, guys. So whenever that video drops. Y'all probably y'all might see the Instagram before the the YouTube video, or y'all might see the YouTube video for this, whatever. But just know that whenever that video drops, the website's gonna be live, and then y'all could basically purchase. So yeah. the main thing to look out is for that that uh, promo video. Uh, if anything, I'll post it on 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 the Instagram, and then I'll post it either on the Clan Boys Two page or no, nah, I'll post it on our our main page, like uh, just by itself. Merch promo, out merch out now, something like that. You could do that too, and then we could post a clip on. TikTok. No, yeah, yeah. And Facebook, whatever gets it through Instagram. Yeah, but I do want to say, guys, uh, I owe you guys an apology because I know my energy was pretty off last episode and I, I didn't come as strong as I usually come. So I'm just going to say, I'm sorry, guys. I came this episode with with a lot of topics regarding regular shit and uh, I would say your favorite segment because I have basically true crime stuff. But uh, yeah, guys, I was just going through a lot of shit last week. Yeah, so uh, you want to start, or you want me to start, or because you you do want to like say something on the on the camera? We were talking about it before and stuff. So all right, fine, fine, fine. So, so we can start off with that then, bro. We could uh, like uh, what's the saying? Address the elephant in the room. All right, but the the fucking whole elephant in the room was the fact that I just felt I feel like Ricardo has been Ricardo has been slacking on me a little bit, and. I, I, last week has a little bit part of it too because I got tight because you told me last week that the reason why you didn't want to record a day was because you were working on the website and then the next day you you came late or whatever I know I come late I I already you really you already know I come late but it's just the fact that you you, you didn't work on a website and you didn't so you, we just 
delayed the the recording date for no reason. Huh. And that got me tight, and then that, that's what my my energy was a little, was off in the in the beginning. I don't know if you guys could tell, and yeah, it's basically it. And also, just the fact that, uh, bef- like like I said, I know I'm late to when we record, but yeah. I, I don't usually I don't usually delay the days when we record. And the reason why sometimes I used to get tight, or I, I mean, well, I never really addressed <coughs> it to you at all because I, I just thought whatever, like there's never, really no point of saying anything. Yeah, but. I, I've been thinking about it recently, and I'm like, sometimes whenever we delay the video, it kind of fucks up whatever I I want to do during the you weekend. Got going on because sometimes I I felt like you didn't consider whatever I have going on into consideration. Word, word, word. That's how I felt. Word, no, uh, I I I hundred percent agree. I do feel like I was slacking. Uh, the only reason why is because, yeah, I know I I got a little uh, what's that word? Um. When you push something, procrastination. Yeah. I got a little bit of procrastination only because I found out how easy it was. And my stupid ass, like, I do this all every single time. When I find something is, like, kind of easy, <sighs> it seems simple to do, I wait till the very last minute to do something. For example, yeah. notes. My notes today uh, consist of, like, over 10 pages of notes, but it, but it, what I, which it took me an hour to do. Yeah. So... It's easy to do this stuff, so I kind of procrastinated and try to save it to the last minute. Last minute and shit. I've done that my whole life. Like, even though I should change that, I'm gonna try and change that. And I already told them that I'm not gonna like fucking past any past Saturday. Like before, we had a set schedule and shit. Like we would record Thursday, got pushed to Friday, got pushed to Saturday, and now sometimes it's on Sundays and shit. But I I told them already. I'm gonna keep my word. I'm keeping my word for you guys as well saturday is the day we're going to be recording and shit well no friday 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 or saturday friday Friday or saturday latest yeah saturday the latest so he can do whatever he got to do because i got shit everybody has shit to do you know what i'm saying so i should keep into consideration what you got going on you know what i'm saying yeah and and, and that's not to to fucking put the blame on on him or just say that yo he's the reason why because i i i know i i I'm I'm always late to shoots. I'm always late to things, but that's something I'm I'm working on recently on changing. Cause usually whenever I'm late, I, I feel like I have some some type of bad time management or whatever. But I've been trying to work on that. Cause that sometimes affects like outside shit. Like I'm usually late to whenever I have to uh, be with my family. Like whenever they want me at a certain at a, at a certain place at a certain time, I'm late. Whenever somebody else wants me somewhere, I'm late to my fucking doctor's appointments. I'm late to work. I'm late. So I feel yeah. like that's bad, bro. That's bad. And only, I mean, it's good that the only places that I'm not late are like the, like, the scheduled places. Like for example, the fucking the movie shit that you mentioned. Yeah. But it, bro, I, I need to work on that because that's not valid, bro. Yeah. That's not valid. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> not yet, but uh, guys, uh, we are gonna drop the the whole thing on, on the nineteenth and shit. I'm gonna have that shit done. I, I haven't done it like I said because I'm saving it for the last minute. Even though it's bad. I, I'm. I'll probably do it. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. So like, yeah. it, this is not even. We're in. We're on the. We're on the fifteenth. So, you know, I, I, I'm or gonna this. try. I'm gonna try and work on it. I'm work on this shit too, cause I procrastinate a lot of things. And as of right now, the point in my life that I'm in, I low key can't do that anymore. Like yesterday, I had this situation where I was kind of overwhelmed with the day and stuff, and. uh I just kind of like left shit to the side. I didn't really do it because I felt like this whole week has just been like nonstop and shit. Yeah. So I didn't really clean my house as much as I should have. Mm-hmm. And I kind of see now how it affects like procrastinating. Procrastination kind of does affect you. Yeah. Because it's the same as not being disciplined and shit like that. So it like low key has been affecting me like right now. So I can't be like that anymore and shit. You know. You should like, think of it like the way you should think about it like uh, in a way where. Um, you're, cause I know when we're more successful, when we have a lot more shit going on, it's gonna be even even busier, even hectic and stuff. Yeah, we word. think it's gonna be a little easier, cause the only thing that's gonna be easier is the fact that we're not gonna have to worry about money. But everything else, having yeah. to set up certain things, is probably gonna be like a bitch. But yeah. we, should, we should probably start thinking about it like that. Like, yo, we're gonna like. But, we're, but, you, but you know what's funny? Like, I feel like that's my biggest worry, and that's what fucks me up the most throughout my whole days. Like, my worrying about money, like. Like, yes, I have money to do stuff and shit like that, but I'm, like, scared to... To spend? Yeah, I'll be scared to spend sometimes yeah, and shit. Yeah, I know me too. And, like, sometimes I feel like if I spend, I'm going to keep on spending and it's going to kind of get out of control. Like, because, oh, I feel like I have all this money and stuff, but 
I gotta remember like I have a lot of other bills and shit to pay up and and shit like that. And you have two so, kids. Yeah, so it's like so I, at times it's worrying. Like I focus all my energy on that and shit, and like I kind of get so drained throughout the whole day just focusing on that and worrying on that. Yeah. So like I feel like in the future when well I'm speaking for myself. Yeah. yeah. In the future when like we have like money and shit like that, even though people are saying more money, more problems. You're just gonna worry about how how to keep that money coming and yeah and how to make more money. That's it. You're not gonna have to worry about like, oh, like can I pay my bills on time? This and that, bro. You're not gonna worry about that shit. Yeah. You know. So I think my worries with money in the future are gonna be different than what they are now. So I think I'm gonna not be so drained by them eventually. You know. Yeah. And yeah. plus, I'm a hundred percent what I want to do in the future as well is like. Uh, even though I should learn it on myself, but I feel like it's always responsible to have like a financial advisor and shit. Mm, yeah, of like, course, of course. Rich people have that shit, bro. Like I know Eminem had that shit at one point. This and that, like financial um, advisors, accountants. Yeah, yeah, like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't really want to do that. Like I don't really want to. Even though I have to be responsible and shit, I want to. I I like I said, bro. I, the what I want to do is live stress free stress free as much as stress free as possible even though it's gonna take money out of my pockets i want to make enough money to not stress about that money coming out of my pockets for that yeah. so uh I, I i know i'll have to get to that point to get like an accountant financial advisor all this shit to help me out with certain shit and stuff no yeah i, I agree bro Look, I, was I, gonna, f- I was gonna say something i feel like it's responsible though to have that it's not irresponsible to not have it to like to ha- all right you you don't need it Cause there's people who don't have that. They know how to fucking properly finance, like you know, mm-hmm. run their finances and shit. But I feel like even if you do, it'll be it'll be like a good help if you had one. Yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say, bro. Fuck. <coughs> well, I'm I'm just gonna move on to like uh, I guess our weekly recap because this is like there is a lot of things that went on. Yeah. But the first thing that I wanna before we get into like because whatever we did the the past couple days, mm-hmm. um, I've been having a little debate. If I should, because you guys can let me know, because I don't know, I'm like yes or no. Um, I know exactly what the fuck yeah, you're gonna talk about. I it's something that it's something that I'm really iffy about, cause I've worked on it a long time. It's my fucking mullet, bro. So I I've been debating if I should cut it completely, like go to a fucking taper back here, taper right here, and then just have no length back here anymore, or keep it, cause sometimes I love it, and sometimes I fucking hate it. I think the only times I hate it is when I don't have a haircut. The, but you see, you see, that's the problem. That that's the thing. You see, when you was telling me like that, my hair when it's long, mm-hmm. it looks good. Mm-hmm. But I only like it when it's a haircut. Yeah. So yeah. so that's yeah, how you I, felt. I, yeah, I think I think I think what. Yeah, and you see how I went back to my yes, original hairstyle. Yes. But I told you this before, bro, and you're now experiencing it. Yeah, I told you I that. I don't know what you meant until like, now. It looks me- like you look kind of dirty and messy. Like, yeah, bro. Like too much hair, right? Yeah. And it, it gets annoying to take care of it sometimes. But with that being said, yeah, that's the only thing I've been de- debating on. So you guys comment it down for me if you guys think I should cut off the mullet and go to this type of hairstyle right here. It's a taper, taper. I don't know what you call it. Taper, fringe cut. I don't fucking know. But let me know, guys. And uh, yeah, also I know last podcast I talked about um, being recognized by a coworker. Yeah, I finally got her name, so shout out to Teresa. And uh, I also made uh, Teresa. I also made like another. Uh, I'm pretty cool. And another coworker, his name is Alex. But I, I, recently, I just been wanting to be cool with my 4:30 uh, shift crew because I feel like it's important to try to just, I guess, meet other people and just interact with people. I don't want to just be a fucking. Uh, an NPC that just looks mad all the time. Mm. So I, I, well, with that, with because those interactions kind of made me feel like, yo, there's a lot of cool people out here. Yeah, bro. So I, I, and I'm missing out. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, bro. I'll just be cool with them. And then yeah, I just had that, I guess, epiphany. You know, yeah. Ago. Like uh, my mom told me this before. Like uh, I mean, obviously, you don't have to like be friends with everybody and shit. Nah, or, yeah, or, or, yeah, like, yeah. Be nice to everybody or like everybody, but it is important to. Like, it's not like you're going to use them, but yeah. you'll never know when somebody can help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it could be the, that random person or Alex or Teresa, whatever, that you just come to them and you're like, yo, like, oh, I'm working on this and shit, like, this and that. 
And they're like, oh, I know a guy that does that. Oh, or, yeah, or, yeah, or for like, sure. Like connections, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're like making connections and stuff and genuine connections, you know what I'm saying? Because at the same time that you're doing that and um, it's not that you're looking for it, but it's a possibility. Yeah. It's the same way in return. You know, if like they'll ever need like, oh, uh, I'm looking for someone to shoot videos and stuff like, oh, yo, I actually do that if you want. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or if, you, if they need or advice. Any advice for social media stuff, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like that. It's kind of like a... Like, I got you, you got me, whatever type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Even though that's not for everybody, because sometimes people are a little, like, fake and shit like that. Yeah. But if you feel like the connection is genuine, then sometimes that happens and shit. Yeah, but even, either, even if I feel that, that it's fake, I, I wouldn't mind helping either way. I, I feel like I, I believe in good karma, regardless. I'm not I'm not really yeah. trying to gatekeep anything anymore. Good how way. I used to. That's a good way to think. Funny enough, right? Like, I'm, I'm kind of the, like... I'm like the in between shit. Like what? I was, I was telling my coworkers about this uh, the other day, right? How about what? Like we were just talking about like how, uh, cause one of my coworkers, he's new type shit. Like mm-hmm. he, he just got hired recently, like two months ago, yeah. one month ago, something like that. But and he was saying how like oh, uh, well basically like, he mentioned some shit. He mentioned an issue and shit that he felt like was an issue and shit. And out of nowhere, uh, Loki somebody snitched on him. Okay. Or it was an issue in the workplace. In the work, so he, uh, so where we work at, we can't mention like unions or whatever. Okay. So, um, and we learned that in training, this time, every fucking whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So he mentioned it to other coworkers and shit, and for some reason, uh, the HR lady, uh, to him. she she uh basically made us take a uh union training or like, whatever, some sort of training that involved what he spoke about. Okay, so basically, like he said that in the break room and shit, and then some people were there, some coworkers, other coworkers in a different type of department in our same building, different department, whatever. They they're the salespeople. They they were there and shit, and they they joined the conversation, right? And then we found out that low key, they're the reason why we had this whole training and shit, and why is because he said that shit, and they basically snitched on him. So what I'm trying to get at, right, is like. Um, I don't try to be friends with, well, me, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't try to be friends with everybody in the fucking like building and shit. Oh yeah, of course. Like I, I, I like uh, I'm friends with like uh, just the people who I see every day and have yeah. to deal with every day and yeah. shit. But sometimes, I, cause I, I sometimes feel annoyed. I said this before, right? Like I sometimes feel annoyed with um, you have to you see somebody in the morning. And it's kind of like you're forced to speak to them, or okay. like, or like you walk past them. And it's kind of like you have to say something because if not, you're going to seem as rude. Yeah. But like, I don't like being forced to do any of that shit. So I still ignore them. Mm. I don't know if that's bad or like, I don't know what it is like. But then I told my coworkers, I'm like, yo, they're not my friends, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't really care to say hi. Like if I have to speak to them because I'm only going to speak to them something work related. Yeah. I'm not going to like talk to them and shit like that. But oh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 are, we are literally the total opposite because I just, I don't, I don't really care. I just, I, I like to be cool with people. I just, eh, eh. But, and and I hate people who are managers and shit. Oh, <laughs> yo, yo, you just fucking reminding me, bro. Yes, bro. At first, I was cool with some managers and stuff, but now, me being cool with managers gets annoying because they they tell me to do certain shit that other people can do, and they it's, I, I think it's the fact that I know how to do a lot of shit in the building, so they. I guess rely on me, rely on me a lot to do certain shit, but it gets annoying how they got me working in one place and they got me somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. Like, all right, bro. Sometimes I'd be like, shut the f- shut the fuck up and go ask somebody else, bro. And then they'd be complaining when you don't do certain something fast or like if you take too long to do something. I'm just like, bro, it's not that serious. Yeah, it's taking what? a job too serious, you know, bro. Like, uh, that's it's good. And then I always have this like um this mindset and shit because I mean I was once a manager and stuff like that or whatever, different job and shit. And, like, the responsibility you kind of get as a manager and stuff is it kind of feels like you're, like, somebody's bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like believe it or not, it does feel like that. You get more money. You get more shit than the regular fucking workers. But, bro, like, you're low-key somebody's bitch because if something goes wrong, bro, you're fucking getting yelled at. If, uh, let's say, whatever, you're you're the one who does all the dirty work and shit, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you gotta like oh accommodate to whatever the boss says and shit like, whatever, bro. Work is kind of like uh, cause I found a lot of shit about my job. I'm not gonna get into it just in case people are like uh, 
watching and yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 but I'll probably tell sure. you, I, I, like, on break or after the podcast and shit, because it's a low key crazy shit. I'm not gonna lie. All right, but but uh, another thing that we went through the past couple of days, we made it we made it past the eclipse. Oh my gosh, we're gonna fucking it's the end of times. We're gonna die. Something something's bad gonna happen on the eclipse. No, nothing happened on the eclipse. Yeah, I, I, I you know what? There, like this whole this whole solar eclipse thing, this whatever it was, it made me realize that a lot of us, including us, because we're, we're we are victims of this fear. Like we fear monger. Yeah. And whenever we see uh, whenever we see a TikTok saying, "Oh, this this eclipse is gonna cause this," because in back in the day, it's, 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 in the, but in the Bible it said this is the end times, signs of end times and stuff. Yo, let let's say let's say uh, none of that existed, right? Social media, uh, religious whatever things. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not coming at religion or whatever. I'm just saying. So let's say like religion didn't exist, no uh, social media, no news. No, like, media and shit. Mm-hmm. Would we still fear and, like, believe in, like, the end of the world or, like, the I, coming of the end of the world? I don't, I don't think we would believe in the, in the end of the world. We'll just believe in higher-ups. Because I know back then they believed in, like, the God of the Sun, God of, like, thunder, stuff like that, weather. Mm-hmm. I feel like we'll, we'll have those beliefs. There's some higher power that's controlling that shit, but no, I'm ta- I'm talking about like strictly the end of the world. I'm I'm talking <sighs> about like would we would we even think about that shit? Would we say, yo, one day the world is about to fucking end? Even though scientifically that's facts, because I mean, yeah, stars die. That means our sun could die eventually and shit, and whatever. So <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like that's just a conspiracy. Yeah, I feel like that's just like, and oh, and the history has said that too. Uh, whatever, 2012, the Mayan calendar ended. Yeah, Loki, they just ran out of space. But whatever, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, uh, maybe not, bro. Maybe not. I don't think so. That's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes I be thinking, like, like people would just be like saying that shit. Cause fear gets people's interest and shit, and like yeah. it's kind of like cloud chasing in a way. You know what I mean? Like, they're because they're trying to speak of what's interesting. What's like? So if we talk about like, yo, we discovered this thing, it could possibly uh, lead to end of the world facts, bro. Yeah. People are automatically gonna click that and watch that, bro. It's the same thing with the uh, what? I mean, whenever we do some fucking, cause I know, cause I, I know when we talked about the whole earthquake, everything like that, we was we were scared and stuff, and you kept saying how. The solar eclipse feels weird, or how you feel like something is coming and stuff. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just us being paranoid. To be honest, I don't think anything's coming. I think the only thing that we have to have to worry about is like us humans as meaning like war, which is real shit though. Real yeah, shit. Like yeah. like obviously, we know that the biggest problems and the biggest problem in this whole world that we live in and shit is ourselves and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. For most, bro, literally. The Earth, we'll say, we say this forever, can live as much as as, as long as as whatever the galaxies will be alive and shit without any problem, bro. The Earth will be chilling. Yeah, we're literally the fucking we we don't know how to live in unison with everything else and shit, you know, including each other. We don't mm-hmm. know how to do that. We don't know how to like. I bet whatever you want is what I want, and whatever yeah. I want is what you want. We'll come to an agreement, and shit. Some like standstill and stuff. We don't know how to do that, and it kind of leads to my next topic, which is crazy that you said that. Mm-hmm. That the only thing that we have to fear is ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty sure you've seen this picture of. Uh, it was in 1963. The Bronx Zoo had an exhibit, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure you saw this before. Is it the mirror? So at the time, I'm pretty sure it was a uh, black and white, mm-hmm. the original picture. So in bold red, white, bold red writing, it said the most dangerous animal in the world, right? And it was just a fucking mirror. It was in between the orangutans and like the chimpanzees, like monkey section. Mm-hmm. And it was just a mirror right there with those letters. And under it said, you are looking at the most dangerous animal in the world. It alone of all the animals that ever lived can exterminate and has entire species of animals. Now it has the power to wipe out all life on Earth. For sure. Nuclear nuclear then, fucking bombs, bro. Then they changed it. Oh, they changed it. This animal increasing at a rate of 190,000 every 24 hours is the only creature that has ever killed off entire species of other animals. Now it has achieved the power to wipe out all life on Earth. And the reason why earlier I showed you the whole Oppenheimer shit. Oh, because of that? It's because of the last scene. 
that 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 specific line and that um like basically that we have achieved the power of being able to destroy all life on earth mm-hmm. made me think of this and then whatever's going on how you mentioned war and shit yeah this specific scene like well it's forever engraved in my mind and stuff yeah oh. I think those calculations. We thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world. I remember it well. What happened? I believe we did. Yeah, bro. That's that ass facts. Bro, that's that. That's scary, bro. Yeah, bro. That's the only thing that scares me. And obviously, I'm 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 scared of a lot of other fucking natural disasters, but that's the thing that I just see most likely happening. Bro. Especially because motherfuckers are greedy nowadays and they don't know how to fucking, like you said, they don't know how to work together. Yeah, bro. And it's crazy how, like... You know, they have said it throughout, <clears throat> literally since prior we were born and shit, the biggest enemy is ourselves and stuff. Yeah. And they say that in a literal way and like, uh, you know, liter- like ourselves and humans as a species, as a collective and stuff. Like, we all have a lot of issues and stuff and we don't know how to resolve them in the right way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's because... It's, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I'm not I'm not the best person either to say... And I don't have the answer to how we're going to save the earth and stuff or save ourselves and shit, save humanity. You know what I'm saying? Because I myself get mad at everybody. I myself, like, judge people. I myself do a lot of shit to other people and shit. So yeah. I feel like the only way that, that will be able, like we'll be able to solve everything is by achieving that. Mm-hmm. Not being, like, not judging nobody, not hating nobody, not, not like, the opposite of that. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's impossible. It's kind of impossible. You can't, you can't fix somebody or tr- brainwash somebody to being a being considerate, person. loving person. Yeah, you can't, bro. My next topic is what we did past week, mm. a couple of days ago. Oh yeah. So we recently had celebrated Abby's birthday. So everybody who's got to this point, comment down. Happy birthday, happy late birthday to Abby, my cousin Ricardo's girlfriend. And uh, I just want, I just want to talk about it. Like it was fun, bro. It's fun us going to we went to Hook and Reel. Yeah. I ate O D fucking seafood. That's the most that's the most seafood I've ate in a long time, bro. bro. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Yo, yeah, like yeah might think that he's not able to eat a lot and shit, but yo, this motherfucker, I swear, sometimes I feel like he eats more than me, bro. Like and I eat a lot, you know what I mean? But that day, he just outdid me by a lot, bro. We we were all finished, bro. We went at a fucking dumbass time, so the restaurant was closing and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, everybody was packing shit up. Motherfuckers was cleaning stuff around us and shit. And bro is still eating. Like, <laughs> he was taking his time, too. Yeah. I mean, I would have, I would have, I would have, um, like, if they said, yo, you guys have to, like, get out type shit, I would, I wouldn't have mine. I'd just be like, I can just take it to go. We out. But regardless, I, I, I did have a, a fun time. I was, I think I ate. If I remember correctly, I ate um I ate two things of um the seafood boils. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like the shit that, that you get in the in the bag, the plastic bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had uh three clusters of cl- uh um snow crab legs. I had uh two two of the things with shrimp, and then one of them had mussels, clams, crawfish, uh potatoes, uh corn. I didn't I didn't get to finish my corn. But I finished everything else. All the seafood was gone. I ate some sweet potato fries, like a little bit, and then before that, as an appetizer, I had some uh, fried calamari. 
Yo, I, bro, guys, you don't know how fucking shocked I was that he ate fried calamari, bro. Yeah. Like, like that shit. Like, I kind of got hype a little, and at the same time, I was surprised. I was like, kind of worried as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait, why? Because you be mad strict with what you eat and shit, and like uh, pretty much everything, uh, mostly everything that's fried gets me I, like I, breaks me out yeah stuff and you'd be worried about that shit so when i saw it, i'm like yo what the fuck like i was hyped i was like damn bro like at least he could fucking yeah eat something you I, know what I mean? see so before i i strictly like uh kept away from fried foods any fatty foods or whatever but it was it wasn't until i think last year or recently where yeah. i just started incorporating more foods into my my diet to testing them out testing them out see what breaks me out what doesn't break me out and I also, uh, I think if I eat it gradually or or just in uh, like one like here and there, I, I wouldn't break out because I my diet's pretty clean. I drink a lot of water, so I, I don't think me just eating something one day is gonna hurt me. Word. And then also like I realized, I was scared to eat Chipotle. Chipotle doesn't break me out. I was scared to eat sushi. That shit doesn't break me out. Uh, when it comes to Chinese food, I know it breaks me out, but like, let's say my parents order Chinese food. I take a bite of, of like a chicken wing or I take a bite out of a uh, chicken and broccoli that my mom gets. Yeah, I know that shit tastes mad fire. Fire, bro. Fire. I know it. I miss, I miss eating that whole shit by myself, but uh, I guess I'm glad I'm kind of paranoid with my acne to the point where I could be disciplined about it. Yeah. It's, it's low key a blessing in disguise, bro. Cause, yeah. cause you're kind of forced to eat good. Yeah. Which makes like it makes you uh not gain weight like in a negative way yeah which makes you look better in the gym and uh-huh. it helps you out with your physique and everything you know what i'm saying and also you know, with the, my appearance with my face exactly exactly the only the only like con that i would say about like the whole thing is that you can't like bulk up as fast the, yeah the, the that's, like, that's what i hate Cause, yeah because some sometimes like certain things that like, you could eat maybe like a dirty bulk or some shit like that because i know you could eat like healthy and clean and bulk up a lot but like for example, certain uh, protein powders and shit like that. Yeah, bro. Peanut butter is like a, a another one. That's what I'm saying. If I if I was able to drink milk, uh, fatty foods, whey protein, I would have been a lot bigger than I am right now. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. But you'll probably be a lot bigger in the future when uh, where we have access to more money and shit. Cause I know certain foods, mm-hmm. you'll be able to eat mm-hmm. more consistent and more of. Cause I have the money to spend. You're gonna be able to get fucking bison meat, fucking Ooh, yeah. Fucking, I've, I've never tried it, but I want to. Fucking um, different types of steaks. Um, See, that's another thing. Before I I, I, st- I stood away from steaks because I was also that red, was my diet. Red meat. I stood away from red meat and fatty foods and dairy. Now I eat um, I eat beef, which is a red meat technically, but I don't eat pork. I, yeah, uh, I'm never gonna eat pork again because I know that breaks me out. But I eat beef. I eat uh, obviously a lot of fish, seafood, chicken. Um, I used to stay away from white breads, like like with the, whenever I would eat, and and bagels, and white rice because I thought that would break me out. But now you eat it. And but it's now fine. I eat it and it's fine. I don't break out from that shit. I used to I used to stay stay away from my mom's um, Mexican rice. You know the the, yeah, or, the yeah, orange yeah, orange rice yeah. And now I eat it, so it's like that doesn't break me out. Well, there you go, bro. Like, but um. Damn, that's that. Whatever. Back to the Avi's birthday, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna say that that's just fucking fire, bro. It's, it's fire that you're like slowly and shit. Because it, it used to get me tight, bro. Like not tight, but like I. Used, you can say tight, bro. I mean, like, because no, it wasn't tight though. It was more like a uh, damn, bro. Like I wish you could eat this right now. Like, like not FOMO? tight. FOMO. Yeah, I would get FOMO for you, bro. Yeah. Like, like damn, bro. I feel weird eating this shit in front of you, and I, I sometimes I get this, bro. I get this a lot. And it's not just with you, but let's say I go somewhere and I get something yeah. and either somebody can't get it or they don't want to pay for it or they can't afford it or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like You want them to get it so they can experience it with you? It's because I, I feel weird like enjoying it in front of you, bro. Yeah. It makes me feel weird and shit, like, honestly. Like, the other day, me and my coworker went to go get a smoothie and stuff. Yeah. And he saw how much it was. And he was just kind of like, yeah, nah, that you're bugging and stuff. And I got the smoothie because, I mean, I just wanted the smoothie and shit. And I was like, bro, do you want me to buy it for you? Like, I'll pay for you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I don't have all the money in the world, and I'm not fucking rich. But I hate, like, I hate that shit. Like, mm-hmm. I hate that shit with a passion. Because I, I, I know when I, like, feel that shit. 
Like it bothers the fuck out of me. Like mm. I'm, it doesn't bother me, but I'm just kind of in that moment. Like, damn, like I wish I could eat. I wish I could eat. I wish I could drink it, or I wish I could experience it real quick. No, yeah. So that bothers me and stuff. So that that's what I would get whenever you can't eat it. But the fact that you ate that shit, like I said, it made me like enjoy the food a little bit more. Mm. And like even Mondo, bro, like I want him to eat the seafood, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't like it and shit. He's a, he's a really really picky eater. And like, bro, shout out to him, bro. He's a real ass friend, bro. Because I I fucking completely didn't take into consideration his eating habits. Yeah. To like uh, with that, because I thought that you know he liked chicken wings a lot and stuff like that. But I guess he doesn't really like chicken wings. He does, but at the same time, I guess he prefers different stuff. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really like take into consideration that, but he still ate a lot mm-hmm. of the other th- other things and stuff. But because uh, I mean, the good thing was that it was all you can eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so is fire. He, so he got a lot of like his. He got chicken wings. He got fries. He got some chicken tenders. He got uh, some garlic bread. Like he was getting other stuff rather than what we got. The what we got and shit. And, and I was telling him, "Yo, just try it. Just try it, bro." Like he tried it. He didn't like it and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I wish he could have ate it for real. Yeah, but I mean, I I just I just like that day, bro. It was mad fun. We came back to your crib. We was chilling. I know y'all was drinking and stuff. I know you got yeah. fucking like drunk and stuff. Yeah. And then uh, I, I think everybody else got drunk too. I was the only one. Me and Mondo and I think Jay was the only one that was not really uh, drunk like that. Mm-hmm. But either way, it was fun talking to everybody, talking to Carlos, talking to Greg. Just, Laughing, having a fun time, bro. Not worrying about shit. Yeah, nah. It, 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 we, me and Abby, were actually talking about it, and uh, May, uh, which is one of our friends and shit, mm-hmm. she texted Abby like saying like, "Yo, we had a fucking blast. Like, it was mad fun and shit." And I told Abby, I think the reason why is because in my house, there's no other entertainment other than each other, bro. Yeah. Bro, right now I don't have any sort of other entertainment, bro. Like, I don't have a TV out in the living room. Well, here in the living room, I don't even have a living room yet. I don't, bro. My TV is literally in the room. The only thing we had was music, and each other, bro. Yeah. So I felt like we were kind of forced to talk to each other. Yeah, like have like fun, random conversations, bro. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying. And it felt nice, bro. It felt mad good. Nobody was on their phones and shit. Like, and also the <laughs> fact that we were under your roof and there we we didn't have to worry about noise or anything, bro. Cause usually whenever uh, motherfuckers uh, stay lo- stay long somewhere, we have to worry about other people sleeping, regardless of whose house it is. But we just ha- and we also gotta worry about neighbors because sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll be outside and stuff. But yeah, but it, it kind of reminded me of like fucking the old times. You think so? Yeah, that's fire. That's yeah, fire. Bro. I, had, I, I had a fun time that day, bro. Damn. What yeah. was like your most memorable thing? Memorable thing or like what? What was like one thing that was like yo, this shit is lit for that bro. on that day? Yeah, that day. Yeah. Uh. I think it was. Besides how much you ate, like no, 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 no. I was not gonna say. I was not gonna say uh, me eating. Um, I think when it was when it was just the boys talking. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Me, you, Carlos, Mondo, and uh, and Greg. It was just us talking because uh, yeah. we barely ha- we barely see them. Well, I barely see them, and then um, we just and I, I barely talk to them like that anymore. Only whenever it's like a special occasion. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the last time I saw them was at your baby shower, so yeah, yeah, that that, that was that was low key my favorite part too. Like, it feels good whenever we like like talk with them and shit, you know, because like you said, bro, we don't see them all the time and shit. Yeah, and I I, I post some some videos up because I, rec- I recorded him uh, how he was talking, how he was acting while he was drunk and stuff. Got you fucking. Uh, solving math questions. I think he was dancing at one point. Yo, damn. Spell red. Spell uh, my last name. J A. Now it's not What am I, Beetlejuice, bro? That's why I said it. Spell Mississippi. What you Mississippi. I'm not spelling. I thought I saw that shit. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, re- I remember all this. I, I know. I knew I was dancing and shit. I was answering math questions. Uh, I think I was like. Uh, Asking random questions. Yeah, he was. I, I, but everybody was answering and mad entertained about it, bro. Like, yo, I fucked up, bro. I feel <laughs> it, bro. Yo, I fucked up. I'm surprised you didn't do that shit. Dude, bro. That, I, I, I said that the very first time, right? Yeah, bro. But, bro, I'm surprised. Yo, this motherfucker surprised me too. He's saying how, bro, he drank OD and he did not get drunk. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you didn't get wasted, is what I'm saying. I know. And you kept drinking. I was like, nah, what the fuck? 
That's what I'm saying. Like I tell, I, I don't know if I have a good liver or like my mind is just like, like I'm too conscious that like I know exactly what I'm doing. I I, don't, I think that that's what it is, Loki. But anyways, I don't want to gas myself up. But <laughs> I was telling Abby right because I knew everything that I was doing. The only thing that was giving me a hard time was controlling my body. Like. I was, bro, I felt heavy as shit. And I kept saying that. That's the only thing that I felt off. I kept saying it to everybody. I'm like, yo, bro, I feel mad heavy. Like, like my bot, my my fucking arm felt like heavy and shit. Like, yeah. And, and my head kept like going like this and stuff. I was like, what the hell is this? And my face felt like, like it was drooping down. Yeah. Like I was like fucking melting or something. I was going to sleep and shit. And it hit me even worse when I laid the fuck down. It did? When I lay down, everybody fucking left and shit. I literally laid down and yo, my body literally felt like it was like floating or like going inside the bed, bro. <laughs> like, fuck. And I was telling Abby, like, yo, nah, this shit is crazy, bro. This shit is crazy. And I'm not gonna lie, we were a little fucking irresponsible, bro, because, um, like, we had to take care of, uh, both babies, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And they were knocked out at the time. They were fine. The whole time the show was going on, it was late, so they were fucking out. But our baby wakes up in the middle of the night, Isabella and shit, so we had to feed her. Like, as soon as the party ended, she happened to wake up to eat again. So Abby was uh, feeding her and shit, and we were both just helping each other out because we were both pretty drunk. But it was nothing too hard to do. It was just yeah, like yeah, picking yeah. her up, changing her diaper real quick. Giving her food, rocking her, and she goes to sleep. Yeah. So it was easy, but it was just like hard because we were drunk and shit. And she was telling me like, "Yo, don't go to sleep. Like I'm fucking scared. Like I don't want to do it and stuff." And I kind of sobered up a little. Like I'm not gonna lie, because I was like, "Yeah, I gotta tee up real quick. Yeah. I gotta know exactly what I'm doing." And I was fine. We did it. What she went to sleep, and we all knocked out. Yeah, man. I'm surprised you didn't wake up with a fucking headache too. I didn't, bro. But I felt kind of like. Like st- disgusting? No, no, no. I felt kind of like, like I still was kind of drunk. Like, oh, okay, yeah, hungover, but, hungover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in a negative way. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. when people say like hungover, they're like, oh, I got like, a massive headache. Yeah, like yeah. Shit. Like, fuck, bro. Like, I'm done, bro. Yeah. Like, but I was fine. We ended up ordering um pancita. You know, you know, like is that is that the the soup with like the. It's like a sponge looking meat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like a stomach lining for like yeah. the cow, the yeah, cow yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we ended up ordering that because that's apparently good for like hangover and shit. Or what's the other one? Uh, chilaquiles, chilaquiles. Yeah, and also um, caldo de camarón too. I heard that too. Yeah. Because Abby was fucked like the next day. Oh, she, she, had, she, had, she had a headache. A bad and she then. she was bad. But you know why? You know why I didn't? Why? Because while we were drinking, I noticed me getting like a little like. Like Fucked tipsy up. and shit. Oh, okay. So I, every time I do that, I, I always notice it and I'm kind of like, I bet, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drink some water. I, I, every time I felt like that, I would drink two cups of water and I drink two Gatorades. So I think I was just hydrated and shit. So I didn't like, because mm. the main reason why the next day you feel like shit is because you're dehydrated and you're kind of like still lit. Yeah. Yeah, so I, w- I kept myself as hydrated as possible, bro, because I wasn't trying to wake up with a fucking hangover. Well, I be knowing what the fuck I'm doing. Like, it's crazy. And I was telling you, you know what's funny, too? Have you mentioned it? What? I, 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 and I remember saying that because I was like, yo, what does it feel like to black out? Yeah, you, you did say that. I, I was asking. I was like, yo, what does it feel like? And everybody was like, yo, bro, it feels crazy. Like, I get scared. Like, like bro, I, I, be, I be thinking, like, how, how would, how would it act? feel to, like, not be in control? Like, I was wondering because at all times, like, I know what I'm doing. Like, you, you obviously, everybody knows what the fuck they're doing and shit, you know? But even when I'm a little, like, under the influence, like, I still know what I'm doing. So... What does it feel like to like turn that shit off? I don't like, know. I, I don't want to feel that, bro. I've never been black. I, I never got blacked out. The max I've done was just get really, really drunk to the point where I could barely walk straight. And like, cause I remember I, I got drunk when um, like uh, at an aunt's party or like a cousin's party. I came home and then when I was going up the stairs, I was like stumbling. But other than that, I never got to the point where like I don't know what I'm doing because I'm scared of that. Because I, I hear my cousins always say how they blacked out and then they wake up somewhere else or they wake up in the street or some shit. I'm like, nah, you bugging, bro. <laughs> yo, yeah, I'm like, y'all bugging, bro. But let us know, guys, if you guys ever blacked out or 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 your crazy drunk experience. I want to read them in the comments. I'm gonna read them next uh, next week on the on the podcast and stuff. Yo, if you guys don't want to like expose, well, you're gonna expose yourselves regardless because I want to be on the episode. 
But y'all can also DM us. Oh us, yeah. Like send us a voice memo if it's too much to type. Y'all can send us a voice memo on um, Instagram and shit, on the DMs and shit. We'll probably mention it. I'm hype, Abby got like to experience a good like birthday, birthday, bro. Like I feel like the last birthdays has been kind of mid because she's been pregnant and shit. Yeah. Oh, then, I mean to be fair, yeah, because this is the first time I've seen her drink in a long time because of that. So yeah, so like I'm 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 happy, and I told her I'm like, yo, just drink, bro, because she was too worried about like uh, since she's breastfeeding, um. Like she was, she she didn't want to drink and stuff. But I told her like like don't worry. Like we did research on how to like properly do it and shit. Mm-hmm. And we also have formula and stuff. So the baby's chilling. But I wanted her to enjoy like the birthday and stuff. Yeah, that's good, bro. But uh, I want to get into some trending topics of the week. I finally, finally got past our fucking week, weekly recap, bro. Mad shit, <laughs> yo. And mad shit, bro, bro. And I haven't even touched my topics, bro. Me neither, bro. I'm probably well, get... besides the bron- the 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 yeah, bronze yeah, yeah. shit. I'm gonna save. Uh, what would you do? Questions for next week, because this is gonna probably lead to certain shit, and this is gonna lead to other shit. But uh, what I want to get into right now is um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into the TikTok wrist party meme. And then that's going to lead okay. to something else. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, I don't know if you guys seen the whole TikTok Riz party meme. I'll, I'll play a clip right now. <laughs> Yo. And, yeah, that's just been going viral and stuff. And it's been going viral for the wrong reason. Because when I first saw it, I was like, these are just jits moshing and having a good a, a fun time and then i don't know what and, and like when i saw it too i didn't automatically think of hate me neither and the fucking comments right were saying oh uh these are uh, or yo last night was a blast oh last night was a movie like you know though when when there's like some cringe ass fucking like party shit or like yeah. some middle school shit mm-hmm. and like people comment that I'm like, bro, this is not even like that. Like, yeah, and it wasn't cringe. It wasn't cringe, and it's funny because motherfuckers used to. I used to, bro. I will have fun moshing like that, bro. How that that's even lit, bro. Bro, fuck out of here. I, I'll do that now. Like if I if like we do that shit, we go into rolling loud and stuff like that. Like we do that shit now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not at a fucking party. It's not a fucking sweet sixteen, whatever it was, bro. It's at a fucking concert and shit, but. Yeah. Everybody but. does that shit. And it's funny because the people who were making fun of them were the same people who probably had done that shit before, bro. There's no way. Or probably never experienced that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Because I'll forever say this, bro. Like, whenever you're vibing to music with your friends and shit, whether it be inside a, inside the car, inside a, a, venue. a fucking venue, at a concert, at a party, whatever the fuck, at karaoke and shit, like... Whenever y'all vibing with fucking music, bro, like it's the best feeling, bro. Ever. It's fire, bro. It's fire, bro. Like that literally fucking like touches your soul, like on some no corny shit. Like I'm serious, like mm-hmm. not nah, yeah, bro. And it was getting me triggered, triggered because I'm pretty sure they didn't think it was gonna get fucking turn. It, it was gonna turn into a meme, but luckily they're not, you know, sad about it. They're they're basically uh, riding the wave and going yeah. with it, kind of profiting profiting off of it. As they should, and then I see a lot of comments now saying how oh the blue tie kid, uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Turkish Quandel Dingle, whatever his name is, Turkish Quandel Dingle. TQM. Uh, oh, they, TQ. They were saying they, they were saying yo, he's actually, he's actually uh, he looks like an innocent kid. He's he's actually sweet, bro's actually bro's actually sweet. And then, uh, but like I said, bro, I, I, I just and, what and also uh like. Funny thing is, right? People were like memeing it, troll trolling about it and shit. But when that random ass kid, like he was kind of like in a way bullying or like being annoying about the situation, because there was a clip of a kid like was he blonde? Yeah, bro, or ginger or some shit, right? Uh, he, bro, that guy, I I forgot his fucking name. I don't want to keep calling him that stupid shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, fucking up, bro. L- the Arab kid. <laughs> I don't know his actual name, bro, but I just, I just, I know what video you're talking about, though. Fuck it, the guy who danced with his tongue out and shit. That guy was uh, sitting down and stuff. That kid was sitting down enjoying his lunch and shit. Oh, and I then, found it, I found it. But you can, you can explain that. And then some fucking goofy was like right next to him, like, like, bro, like, like you're trying to get attention so bad, bro. Like that's like some like, like dick riding shit. You know what I mean? And he was just kind of trying to enjoy his food, and then like he went over to like 
the other kid with the the blue tie and shit. Yeah. And he was just kind of fucking bowing at his feet, like, bro, like he thought he thought he was doing something, and then yeah. the comments were like violating him. That us? So I'm and he ended he ended up taking down his video. I'm gonna see this right now, then. This guy. That motherfucker. Yeah, so he posted on his account, but he he thought he thought he was about to get mad love and shit. Like, yo, I'm about to be like, like fam famous or some shit. But he ended up getting like, like <laughs> bro, bro's not getting added to the lore. <laughs> oh my, that shit has 90k likes, bro. Yeah, bro. Like I said, bro, he thought he was gonna like do something with that shit, but everybody's violating him. Bro's not getting an edit, <laughs> which is which is crazy. Like they were, first they were trolling them, but in. Yo, that's just scared the Yo, you see a tape? Out. Yes, you see a bro. Paint? Yes, bro. The same people who were making fun of them ended up defending them out of nowhere. Like It's probably... Me, so maybe... They're so maybe, trolling, bro. Yeah, they maybe just... It was like troll out of love, bro. The troll out of love. Maybe maybe people like us were just taking it too fucking serious and we're, we're just sensitive. I mean... Nah, nah, nah. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. There has... They, they were probably trolling in a funny way. Not like, oh, like, it's just the internet. Don't be sensitive about it. Yeah. But I know damn well, like, there's those fucking people who are being dead ass about it. Nah, yeah, you probably, yeah, you're right. They were bro. being dead ass about it. And right. if you were dead ass about it, all right, if you were trolling, whatever, like, I get it, bro. I, I, I fuck with the whole, like, uh, fucking... The lore. The, the whole, like, what's the show? Dark comedy, whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not sensitive when it comes to jokes and shit. But if you was that ass, bro, I know damn well you was that kid in the back just sitting against the fucking wall. Or the kid trying to fit in, like, the the one on the right. Yeah, bro, like, I know damn well you was trying to be part of some shit like that. And you didn't get the the opportunity and stuff. So you kind of, like, are insecure about that situation. Nah, not for sure, bro. And it leads it to another topic that I saw that triggered the fuck out of me. So... Word. I don't know if you've seen it. it. It was a video of Kai in Jamaica with Ray. I saw he was going crazy on a girl, though. Like, he was yes, like, that's what I'm talking about. Where is it? Oh, that's who you're talking about? Yes. This. And then Kai, obviously, he's, they're having a fun time, right? Right? What, I, what got me triggered is people reacting to this shit on Twitter. I Same fucking what? hate Twitter, bro, Same with a what? passion, bro. I have the I have the the quote right here. There was a there was a, a quote retweet, and somebody some some girl said this video makes me uncomfortable. I can't explain it, and she didn't explain why it made her uncomfortable. Nothing. Just jump into conclusions and jumping on the band bandwagon of people hating on Kai, bro. I feel like hating on Kai is like a trend or some shit because he's like the most popular motherfucker on the planet right now type shit, and. People just wanna want something to complain cl complain about when it comes to Kai, no matter what. Cause that shit, I was like, how? Like they're just having fun, bro. And then someone someone was like, oh, some other people were like, oh, Ray's underage, this and that. But Ray's nineteen; he's not underage, bro. Boom, we about to disarm that whole like uh, that. That's basically a fucking like uh, shot. That's a shot right there, bro. But we about to disarm that whole thing, bro. So first of all, right? Yeah. It's making you uncomfortable. Now I'm gonna fucking address this to why maybe it's making you uncomfortable or whatever. Oh, uh, Kai is forcing Ray to do that. Clearly he's not. There's been multiple videos of him doing that to different different women. Women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who are choosing to do it. To do it and participate in that dance. And they're at a, they're at a club. Now that dance has been going around for a long time. You know what I'm saying? That shit is it's a trend, bro. Like people call that shit twerking, bro. Like it, there's a fucking name to it. So it's a thing. And people have been dancing that shit like with the whole like a girl in front grinding. And, uh, yeah, grinding, bro. That that's what it used to be called, grinding and shit. Like mm -hmm. it was specific and shit. You know what I'm saying? So. That's regular, like, mm -hmm. that's regular and shit. The girl is participating. Everything is obviously um, with, con what's the shit, what's the word? Um, Consenting? Con yeah, con everything is consensual, like, with consent and shit. So, I, I, I'm kind of confused as to why it's making you uncomfortable. Yeah, you know bro. what I'm saying? Ray, he's enjoying it. The girl, she's enjoying it. If not, they wouldn't be doing it. Kai is the only reason why he's laughing is because he's his boy. It's his boy. And, you know, when you see your boy going crazy, going crazy and shit, 
you're gonna get hype. Exactly. The fuck? Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, there was also tweets in that in that same video thread saying how uh, Kai Sana is so gay, it's obvious. Saying that the reason why he's dancing with a bunch of girls is because he's low key gay and he's covering himself up. Now I saw some other shit involving what the, Kai. What the fuck? What? I saw some shit about like an OnlyFans model trying to expose Kai. That was recently, bro. Yeah, that's what. Oh no, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me lacking. What the fuck is that? Fucking burger just came out of my nose. Ew, bro. I'm about to fucking zoom into that shit. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> call me lacking. O D. <laughs> Whatever, Anyways, right, continue man. though. Continue, continue. But um, fuck yeah, like I saw that shit. Like I don't have no no information about it. Yeah, everything is strictly allegations and like um, just nah, it's not allegations, bro. It's that us. Or oh, oh, you oh, went on live today. Try to expose him and shit with a fucking lie is crazy. Yeah, bro. I th- I think she had signed an NDA too and she broke it. Cause I'm pretty sure NDA you can't really talk about what fuck happens. In, uh, oh yeah, and, and I heard that he's getting, she's getting sued now, or like they're going to. Yeah, because she, she posted a video of of Kai sleeping with her in, in the bed and stuff. Damn, bro. Yeah, so bro. She, she, clip. Yeah, clip, bro. These bitches, GGs. These bitches are fucking stupid, bro. I swear. No, I'm not gonna lie. Like that's. <sighs> Man, some shit happened like that to you, yes. bro. It's like it's like uh, if you ever watched the movie The Greatest Showman and shit, whatever. Yeah. Uh, in that movie, right? There was a scene where uh, Hugh Jackman, he's a main character, and he's with uh, this other character who... Oh, I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, I've seen, you... it. I seen it with you. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You watched this movie? Yeah, you, you had a plane in your living room. Oh, shit. It, well, 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 what scene? What scene? He, he ends up getting kissed by like the, the girl. The and fucking then, singer. Yeah, the singer, and then uses it as blackmail or some shit. Bro, nah. So, he, so that bitch is basically smart, bro. Fucking bitch. So, like... She fucking confessed her love and shit to him and, and, and kissed him or whatever. Kissed him, right? And he said no, cause I'm married, I got kids, all that, right? And then when she performed the, on the last performance in front of a mad people, whole crowd, mad paparazzi and shit. Oh, he kissed him. They, I they mean, were, she kissed him. They she were saying him. they were saying like, I right, like thank you for your last show. Fucking announcing that the show is over. They bowed, and then like that's it. That that was gonna be it, right? And then, like, before the cameras went off, she, like, forcefully kissed him. And he was just like, what the fuck? And he couldn't do nothing about it because it was in front of everybody. Yeah, like, like the last thing he could do is literally back away. And, like, he couldn't freak out because it was in front of everybody and shit. But everybody caught that split second, bro. Even before he could pull away because he pulled away, he, they fucking caught him on camera, put it in front of the fucking newspapers and, and shit. And his wife saw that shit. And his wife saw it, bro. So it's like, people are crazy nowadays, bro. I feel yeah. like they will do anything to like do weird shit like that i don't know bro that's like fucking weird like yeah bro fucking home record like Spe- speaking of like musicals and stuff because i know great showman is a musical yeah oh the joker, the joker trailer came out recently there's some nerd talk for you guys every i feel like almost every segment every fucking podcast we're gonna have like a nerd segment yeah or whatever, yeah, yeah but, of course bro the joker trailer came out peak that shit was peak, bro. And the way it ended too, like the whole uh, lipstick on the on the glass, and they start smiling. That shit was pure cinema, bro. So, so, somebody was like, "Cause I seen a fucking clip, bro, by accident. Like, well, it wasn't by accident. I didn't think it was like anything, but I I kind of saw a spoiler, bro. Oh, the Joker." Yeah, it was like behind the scenes, bro. Like, oh, don't tell me what it is, bro. I, I don't want to. I'm not gonna tell you, bro. I hope you don't see it on your for, for you page and shit. But it was basically a behind the scenes of uh, how they were shooting it, and it was just um, it was involving um Joker and Harley Quinn and shit, and somebody in the comments and like I low key was like, yo, I, I don't think I'm supposed to be watching this. People in the comments were agreeing. I, I like, I, I thought I was the only one tripping, and then people were saying like, "I'm pretty sure I just got spoiled the entire movie." Yeah, and, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. And watch this it. one shit, and it's not even like edited. It's like behind the scenes, like I said, bro. Damn, bro. That means a lot of things, bro. It could mean a lot of things. Yeah. Damn. Well, I saw, I saw a lot of people saying, "Yo, uh, this movie might be trash because it's a musical," but I don't think it's gonna be trash, bro. I don't think it's gonna be your average musical, like your your average fucking high school musical. Um, type of musical. I think it's gonna be a valid musical, uh, because bro, you you love uh, what, what is it? The the Greatest Showman, and that's a musical. A lot of people love that movie too. That's yeah. a musical, and then, uh, I I I don't mind musicals, but with this one, my, like I I feel like it's gonna be 
more um more it being in his head like it was in the last movie and because there was a scene in, in the trailer where they're dancing and like they're all dressed up and then it transitions into, into them dancing when there's mayhem going on in the background mm. so i think it's just them how how they perceive uh themselves doing chaos so the musical is the musical part you think is going to be like their emotions their, oh their emotions like or their the, manic episodes yes yes and I know they're not gonna. Be, I know some of them, or I don't know if it's, this is true. I know the musical is not gonna be original songs. They're gonna be like like um, covers. But either way, I think it's gonna be a good ass movie, bro. I I really think it's gonna be another good movie. I love Joker, even though you can't watch it by yourself. I feel like I could watch it by myself and and be like not really enjoy it as like oh my god, it's a good ass movie, but be disturbed by it. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna lie, like. Uh... I, yeah, I'm still on that, bro. Like, I can't watch it by myself. But that's how you know it's, it's a great fucking movie, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, bro, he won, he won Oscar. He won, he won an Oscar because of that shit. Yep. So, that that, bro, I'll forever say this, bro. I'll forever say this. You know, a movie is good when it literally like it makes you feel some type of way, like yeah, 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 yeah. whether it's scared, fucking anxious, hype. Hype, sad, fucking emotional, like all that shit. If it makes you really, really feel something, this shit made me feel uncomfortable. And so, is is a uh, is the Human Centipede a good ass movie? In a way, it is, bro. You think so? In like a sick way, it is, bro. Like if you like the horror, uh, that's not horror though. That's like that's like, dis- that's disturbing as fuck. I never watched it, but I know what it is, and I, I don't want to watch it. Yeah, it's, it's it's not a good movie. But like. <laughs> You know what I mean, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's just fucking disgusting and shit. Well, what, yeah, what, but what, that was his full intent, though. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what'd you think when you saw the trailer? Like, what, what was your first thoughts? Uh, this is about to be a fucking banger. Like, yeah. that's, that's that's my first, like, thought. Like, I, I, I like that scene, too, bro, which is crazy. The fact that they got it perfectly. The whole, like, smiley shit. That shit was fire. Um, I think uh, Lady Gaga is perfect yeah. for the fucking role. Like, perfect, bro. People are complaining about her makeup not being fucking comic accurate or like whatever but i don't think it has to be comic accurate it has to be it has to look like the way we know the other carly quinn to look like this bro. is a completely different entity bro it's if you know it's her like when you look at her you're like oh shit that's harley quinn yeah I, then it's they're doing a good job so i think it's gonna be fucking amazing and shit i don't really mind musicals that much as long as it's not Entirely a fucking musical Cause I'm gonna be honest bro Um Certain music Certain musicals are tolerable mm-hmm. When they have Like Some dialogue and shit Some parts of the movies are like Alright bro This is chilling mm-hmm. And then They got their musical aspect bro Yeah But Other times musicals are so annoying to me Cause It feels like there's no dialogue. It's only fucking musical, musical, music, like song, song, I know song. what we're talking about. I know what we're talking about. Yeah, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, it's, it's, there was this fucking musical, and I'm not trying to hate on it and sure or whatever, but it's a uh, fucking... I didn't finish it because I couldn't fucking watch it. Um, it, It's about, like, New York City and shit. Uh, fucking... I forgot what it's called. Um, or is it back, back then? In the Heights or some shit like that? Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's like a newer, newer musical. Yeah, like bro, like I try to watch it because I was just curious. Like a lot of people were fucking with it and shit, and I got no nothing wrong with like uh, anything that involved the movie and shit. It was just like I, I fucking could not take it, bro. What about Greece? Is it Greece a musical? I I, th- I think so. But I'm sure, it is, bro. See, I, I'm I'm uh, uncultured with that shit. Oh, I, yeah, I never watched watch that. Greece? What about um, what's that other one that takes place in New York? It's an old movie. Uh, it's like about a, a gangs uh, fighting each other. The. It's like in the tip of my tongue, bro. The blood work. Or the no, no, the, no, no, no. The something. Whoa, 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 whoa. There, it takes place in New York. Multiple gangs. It's like Hispanic gangs. Fuck, That's how you know I don't fucking watch musicals like that. But I watched it. I watched it when I was in in middle school, and I I liked it. Maybe I'm just not into musicals that I straight up. Probably not, bro. But it's weird though, cause like I oh, like Grease that. was a musical, and I like that. I like that movie. Yeah. So, High School Musical. That I I I I surprisingly that's like a. 
a movie I could watch. It's you, like see, a, you see what I'm saying? Like, and funny enough, I could watch that too. You watched High School Musical before? I I, I watched it just because Abby forced me to. All of them or just the first one? No, just just one. I forgot which one it was. Damn, not yet, but uh, bro, I, I I fuck with that shit. You All know right. what I'm saying? It's like cringe though, but like, it's like tolerable, bro. I don't I don't know how to explain it, bro, guys. It's and it's not the whole thing is a musical though, right? No, no, no. Exactly. Nah, nah, nah. Damn, I can't find it, bro. It's getting me tight. Another one that, that I like, Tick Tick Boom, is the one with Andrew Garfield. I didn't mind. I didn't mind that one. That I, shit I, was I, a musical. I didn't watch that shit. Yeah, it's, it's a good. It's a good musical. Musical. If I find it, I'm gonna put it up on the screen, bro. But yeah, you gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, probably screaming at me, saying saying the fucking name of the musical, and I'm just like, comment that shit down right now. Comment that shit down right now, guys. Yeah, because I know he's he's tight right now, bro, because he can't find the name. I, I I don't think I'm gonna find it. It's it's not. Well, fuck it, bro. You you'll probably like uh, we'll insert the title or some shit or. Fuck. So like about a month ago and shit, right? Yeah. There was this uh anaconda, uh northern green anaconda. I know and what shit. you're talking about. You seen it, right? Yeah. So this shit was a month ago. Not even more than like two months or three months and shit. Literally like a couple weeks. It, it, it was like one of the biggest snakes uh, in history, bro. The longest snakes in history, right? Yeah, like. That shit was well in the recent times. Recent times, it's obviously. Like what, thirty, like thirty feet. Twenty six feet long, and that shit was literally discovered, not even like a month, and that shit was already shot dead. Yeah, I saw that shit. That shit got me tight, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> you can't be fucking. You Just can't. Let, have a, you can't let nature be nature. That's what I'm saying, you bro. Can't. And and then we wonder why, like, we haven't seen like all this, all this, like. Beauty of the fucking earth Shit is constantly getting discovered bro Cause it kinda doesn't want to be discovered bro Yeah You know We don't deserve to For it to be shown to us But why But what was the point of killing it though That's what I don't get Bro it's just like a trophy bro That makes no sense bro Just wait till The life of the, the snake expires And then you could just Collect it after But you But that's how they think They didn't kill it that's though That's fucking That's mad dumb bro It's the same thing with like Uh Poachers and shit Like they want their furs And shit like that The fucking Elephants The rhinoceroses And shit Which they're going extinct as well Then you got the fucking Um The parrots Macaws Whatever In fucking um South America and shit The blue one the, I'm pretty sure that went extinct already you, you know, The one from From blue, Rio from, Yeah Rio Rio my fault Rio and shit That shit went extinct and stuff Unless they came out of nowhere and I seen a video too that went viral and stuff, of a guy who uh, they saw like a rare bird and shit. And they killed it. No, they saw a rare bird that hasn't see, it hasn't been seen in years. For real. And the guy who's a native to like the land and shit, he was kind of like the guide. He was like fucking happy as hell, bro. He's like, yo, bro, like, look, do you see? Do you see? He didn't speak English or anything like that, but he was just like full of emotion yeah, of and course. shit. And he was just showing the guy. He's like, yo, like, no, no way, bro. Like, it's crazy and. Bro, imagine how we're gonna feel when it's gonna be rare to see like uh, like like it's already rare because we don't see it every day like at the zoo, but imagine when they like zoos don't exist no more, bro. Yeah, because there's no animals to show. Like, bro, they're gonna be dead, bro. Like dead, or they're not gonna like they're gonna be held in captivity and shit, like protected and stuff, bro. But that's sad, bro. I went to the zoo today. Like, I went to the zoo and I was just thinking about that, bro. Like, all the animals are there. Yeah, like, it's kind of sad that they're there, you know? Yeah. Like, it is sad, and I'm kind of, like, contributing to that, because they're, they're, like, I'm enjoying it and shit in a way. Yeah. Because it's so fascinating seeing the fucking animals and stuff, but I was just thinking about it, like, damn, bro, like, imagine these motherfuckers were free right now in their cribs, like, where they belong and shit. Sometimes, though, like, they need to be, like, staying there because, oh, they can't, like... They can't go back because they're going to fucking die. They're going to fucking die and shit. Like, I understand that. But I saw like uh, two uh, bald eagles there, and I know bald eagles are like, they're like protected right now. You can't hunt them, you can't do anything. Like there's not a lot in the United States, and I saw two of them there, and bro, they looked mad majestic, bro, like mad beautiful and shit. Just like damn, bro, this is kind of sad. Like I saw this video. A lot of these shits are videos. <laughs> it's always me seeing something on like social media and shit. Yeah, just yeah, wanted yeah. to talk about it. But there was this. That's good though. That's good. There was this video of a. Uh, it was a guy who went to go see his baby. Okay. And I related to it OD because when um Isabella was first born, since the whole thing was going on where Abby was sick and shit, 
there was a point in time where we could only see her through the glass. Okay. So, um, uh, I was watching like Isabella and shit through the glass and shit, and I was just like, damn, I want to touch her, right? But in this video, he was recording the baby because he could only see her through a, like a little fucking spot in the curtain. Yeah. He could barely see the baby. And then it, sh the baby was crying. And then you see like a pair of hands just go like, like this is the baby crying and she goes, what the fuck? Bro, like exactly how I did it to the baby, bro. And then obviously like instantly, bro, the, the parents press charges against the nurse and shit. Her, fuck this person, bro. Amanda Burke. That's the name of the nurse. So fuck Amanda Burke. That's the name of the fucking nurse. And as of right now, all the charges were dropped. What? Like basically nothing happened to her. Uh, they base. She still has her uh, license. I was about to say, is she still is she still working there? Uh, she still has her license. I'm not sure if she still works there, but I know she still has her license and shit. And basically, bitch, bro. she didn't get no no jail time. No like nothing was like nothing happened to her. Basically, yeah, bro. And I was telling Abby, I'm like, yo, bro, like. If we were in that situation, bro, I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking her up, bro. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if she's a woman, bro. Like, uh, I'm fucking her up, bro. Like, that's a baby and shit, you know? Yeah. Abby was like, yeah, like, she, they wouldn't even be no charges. Like, whatever. She's like, whatever. Wait, you know? what'd she say? What'd she say? She, she'd be dead. Like, <laughs> oh <laughs> like she'd be so stupid shit. But, nah. That, when I saw that and I got triggered, bro. Like, Nah, for sure, bro. What the fuck? You, bro, people who, who, who hurt innocent... Babies, innocent people, innocent, ch innocent children, innocent people, they're the worst types of evil, bro. Like that other bitch, bro. Like, I was going to talk about it too, but I didn't want to. It's a little too disturbing. Which one? But I don't know if we mentioned it in the last episode. Uh, the one who went on vacation. Oh, my gosh. Yo, I recently just saw, uh, um, whatchamacallit, a video of, like, the baby in the crib. The audio? Crying. Yeah. Yo, I, I watched, like, like, two seconds of it, and I got out. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. Bro. Yeah, bro. That's another, like... Sad fucking story Bro stuff. how My mom My mom Cause my mom bought, bought it up to me She's seen multiple videos Of children neglecting Their their kids Ever since the video Of the woman Parents neglecting their kids Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Parents neg neglecting their kids um, After that one video Of the 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 baby In the in the shopping cart With only like Just a diaper Oh yeah Ever yeah. since that time She's been seeing a lot more And she comes up to me Saying yo Did you see this I'm like no But Like it's sad that this is happening and shit. It's getting me tight. Like, yo, why is it now that a bunch of inconsiderate parents and like a lot of people are just neglecting their kids, bro? You know what's funny? Like, I feel like this has always been a thing, though. It's just getting more attention. This is like it's like everything. Yeah. You know, now we're seeing it more. We're seeing it more on social media. A lot of people are, you know, they like recording everything now. Like another dumb bitch, bro. Uh, she fucking. She was in her car and she left. She dropped off her kids at her grandma's house or her mom's house, and saying how, "Oh, my boyfriend says that he doesn't want no kids. Uh, I'm just doing this to make him happy, this and that, and just doesn't want nothing to do with the kids no more." <sighs> yeah, bro. See what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I got this has been around for a minute, for since probably since we were fucking existing, but now people. Love recording everything and stuff, and yeah. in a way, that's good. It's also bad at times, but that's probably the reason why we're seeing a lot more and shit. <sighs> yeah, bro. And fucking social media spreads everything like wildfire, bro. Yeah. If we never was watching the news, or if we never watched the news, we wouldn't know this shit. We wouldn't have known that because we don't watch the fucking news. Yeah. We saw it on social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is the good thing about it. Yeah. In a way, yeah. yeah. I guess the last thing I'm gonna talk about, right? Which yeah. is kind of relates to us. Okay. But um not entirely, kinda in a way. But I'm just gonna show you a quick video. Alright, but we get into up. it. Shut up. Steve Morris is waiting for an old friend, hoping this guy he hasn't seen in years and completely lost touch with will suddenly appear, just like he promised forty years earlier. They each left the bar that night with half of the dollar bill. On one side they wrote that day's date, four four seventy six. The other their far off reunion date. 40 this years later. Past Monday. Growing up in West Palm Beach, Florida, Steve Morris and Joe Whitehead were best friends. They even went on a cross country road trip together in this contraption. Well, that was a happy then. ending to it, bro. Shortly after the trip, Joe moved away and they lost touch. Decades passed. And yet, 
bar. Guess who showed up at the bar this week? <laughs> right on schedule. Hey, brother. How you doing, man? I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you, too. I think if you're the real joke, you're going to have the other half of this guy. I do. Astronomical. I just happen to have it right here. But Steve and Joe proved it's never too late to reconnect. Yo, that's fire. Yo, I got scared, bro. I thought, I thought the motherfucker was not going to show up. Like, maybe the fucking the friend died or, like, yeah. he just forgot about his old homie and stuff. But, yo, that's fire, bro. Bro, it's, it's like, it's sad and, and, like, lit at the same time because there's sometimes people who never get to see any of their friends ever again. Yeah. They fully lose touch of their friends, bro. They, that's it. This, the last time they seen him was graduation or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, but um, yeah, that's that's what I was really trying to get into and shit. Like how we sometimes just lose friends, really like stop connecting with certain people and shit, and other people, like you basically like for the rest of your lives, you gotta like grow up together and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like cause recently like Eamon came over and shit, and it was just cool. Like I haven't seen him in mad long, and we're still the same. You know what I mean? That day uh, with the baby shower, I hadn't seen my other friends, Teddy and Ali. Ali Ali was a surprise, a big surprise, yeah. And it was still the same, you know? So it's like, after 40 years, bro, their fucking friendship remained the same, bro. Of course. I see, you know, it's a real friendship. It's just a real relationship in general. Yeah, bro. That's fire. That's what I'm saying, bro. It's it's, it's crazy, and bro. Yeah, it... it, it the way I see it in, like, the sad point of it is the fact that they haven't seen each other in 40 years. That's and what I'm saying, bro. And, and it wasn't their choice. It's kind of like life got in the way of stuff and people people grow up and they had, they had to not see each other. Yeah. That's crazy. That, that's, yeah, that, that's another thing that I thought of, too. Like, they have stories for 40 years, like... They're going to catch up on a lot of shit. They're going to be talking about... Bro, they're going to be talking for hours, bro. Yeah, bro. What happened to you during this time? During this time, this year, like, where were you when this happened? That's what I'm saying, bro. And it, it is fire because, like I said, bro, sometimes you're going to grow up with all your friends and shit and live the rest of your lives being friends and shit. Yeah. And sometimes you don't. And I feel like that way. Yeah. You know, because some of my friends I'm slowly disconnecting from mm -hmm. and some I'm getting closer and shit, too. So, but it's like, it's like sad in a way, you know? Cause I, I thought my whole life that They're gonna when we there. grew up and shit, we were just going to be, this is like the friends that you have since you're like young and stuff are going to be your friends forever. Yeah. But it really don't work like that. You know what I mean? That shit, that's not how life works and shit. And yeah, bro. I kind of figured that out in fifth grade. That's the God. Damn, what the fuck? I, I, yeah. was, I was not even thinking about that shit in fifth grade. Yeah, I figured that shit out in first, fifth grade only because, like, I didn't have a phone, bro. So it was kind of like the same situation. I didn't have a phone. So I couldn't connect with anybody, bro. Damn. Like, my friends in fifth grade were really my friends and shit. And some of them now, like, if I see them and shit, it's kind of like, I bet, like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, oh, shit, like, we're cool and stuff. But it's never, like... It's never, it's never like that. Like, oh, like a true, like, yo, you're true my, friendship. yeah, like you my bro, like type shit. Like, yo, bro, like, yeah. it's more like, yo, what's up, bro? Chilling? Yeah, chilling, whatever. All right, cool. Fuck out. Whatever. You know, and, um, yeah, bro, that shit happened to me. Fifth grade and somewhat middle school, basically middle school and high school, same thing. Yeah. You know, I, every single year I knew that certain friends were just peace out, bro. I was thinking about that uh, the night when whenever we were here, because when yeah. I when I asked them the question, yo, do you guys think you're going to be staying in New York for the rest of your lives or just the U.S. and stuff? Yeah. And I know I don't want to stay in New York for the rest of my life. Maybe not even the U.S. Maybe some maybe somewhere in Europe or. If I if I were to stay somewhere in New York uh, in the U.S., it would be somewhere down south, like North Carolina, Texas, because of the, the um, what you wanna call it, like the financial stuff down there. When it comes to uh, houses, it's cheaper down there, and cost you, of living is different. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and, and I know down there, uh, uh, they told me that it's kind of racist down there, 
even to even to your own kind. But I feel like I'd rather I, I, I would I don't I wouldn't care. Either way, we're gonna be far away from people. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what I want to do. Like, yeah. Like I I I want to go somewhere else only because I want to be like keep my distance from people. You know, have space in between. Houses and shit like that They can't really see what you're doing Hear what you're doing Like You're kind of away from the world And Be Have a fucking house Nice house and shit You know Not not worth your whole fucking like Kidney or some shit Yeah But like, it, was, it got me thinking of that Cause um, They said They said that They, they don't uh, They don't know if they're gonna If they're gonna leave New York Or stay Some of them said yes They're gonna stay Most likely Someone said I don't know But I know I'm not. I don't know. I know you're not gonna gonna stay in New York. It's gonna happen, bro. I feel like when huh. when maybe we don't see our friends. No, yeah, a hundred percent, bro. That's that's another thing why I'm sad, bro. That's 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 one of the saddest parts about growing up. Yeah, you know? bro. That's that's you definitely had to worry about your family and shit. Yeah, bro. And I noticed that like also recently, um, being here. Uh huh. Shout out, we're at the new crib. But uh, yeah, and being here and shit, mm-hmm. like I'm away from everybody, you know. Like it's literally just me, Abby, the babies, away from the world, bro. Yeah, that's what it feels like, bro. When we're here, just chilling and shit. When we're in our rooms specifically, it just feels like we're away from everything, bro. Do you hate it? Cause I know I know you're you're. I don't. No, nah, you don't. You enjoy it. I I I love it. You good? Yeah, it's good, bro. Yeah, I enjoy it, bro. Like, it's good. living by ourselves, bro, is is like one of the best feelings that I've had in a long time, bro. That's good, bro. In a long time, you I'm know, happy. I f- I feel like I feel like it's gonna. Thank you, bro. I feel like it's gonna heal like a lot of things, bro. Like we were talking about it and shit, and like I feel like it's just gonna heal a lot of stuff. Mm. You know, and I feel like I needed this. I needed to just be at peace with shit. You know. Yeah. Because a lot of times, bro, when you're living with somebody. They're they huh bump heads. Not just that, but also like if they're not having a good day, then you can't have a good day. Then it makes you feel like you can't have a good day. Mm. It doesn't. It's like you get no breaks, bro. Like if I have a shitty day, bro, at work, I come back here and I could just chill by myself, bro. Yeah. Be shitty by myself, not have to worry about somebody else had a shitty day and somebody else had a shitty day. So now my shitty day. Is interfering with theirs And then we just fucking Clash and shit Cause nobody has a good day mm-hmm. You know But now here it's just Just me and Abby And the babies bro They don't bother us Besides being bad But That's it bro mm-hmm. You know what I mean That's that's a That's a pro of Living by yourself bro You get to like Get away from the world bro Facts You know what I mean Life is crazy I just know that Lore Like Our Like lore and shit Is about to be crazy and that's my goal in life, you know? Like, I want I want to have crazy lore. Lore? Like, it's called dad lore. Like, the dad lore. Okay. And it's not just for dads. Mm-hmm. But it's like, whenever you become a dad, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to have dad lore. And it's because one day you're going to be sitting down with your kid, and then they're going to ask you, what was you doing at this age? And you're going to say, this is what I was doing. Mm-hmm. You know? Julia, one day, she's going to be like, yo, when... uh." Like, when did you first move out of your house? And then you're going to be like, Whew. Yeah. And then like, oh, uh, did you have a lot of friends in high school? Brings you back. Yeah. So it's like the stories you're slowly making is lit and shit, you know? Fire, yeah. It's fire. And that's that's like, that's one of the reasons why I, I'm thankful and like, I'm... Like, why I have, like, the life I have now is because I know it's going to be a good story. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good mindset, bro. Bro, it's going to be a good story, you know? Yeah. And everybody can see it that way because everybody has their own story, you know? But I know when I die, when I'm about to die and shit, I'll be like, damn, bro, like, this shit was fire. Yeah. This shit was fucking fire. With that being said, uh, I'm gonna show you the the motivational video before like we go to the scary shit. All right, but so just to end it off with that, duality. 
Cause then it gets me pumped to, to like to be the best version of myself. Yeah. Basically shit on people. Tee up guys. There's a time where you have to, you know, like his video, tell yourself, you know, tee up bro, you got this. We all fail. We could get back up. But then when you're up, make sure you never fall down, bro. Again. And but if you it, do and if you do, come back up. And like, keep going, keep going. But you know what I mean, bro. Be fucking ruthless, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? Life is already fucking you up, bro. Life is already fucking you up. And you know how they say, oh, it's not how hard you, you hit. It's, it's not how hard you hit. It's how hard you could get hit and get back up. Fuck yeah. that. Life is going to fucking hit you so you hit life fucking harder, bro. Yeah. Hit life fucking harder, bro. You don't got to take the fucking punches, bro. You don't got to be like, fuck, yo. Like... Uh, Fuck, I could take this. I could handle this, bro. No, bro. Fuck that. Fuck that. Tee up, Kings. You know, you know sometimes, Queens. sometimes I'll be feeling like I, I kind of wish I had a, a private gym because I can't scream. I can't do. I can't be loud as I want to be in the gym. I felt that. Like, I, I feel like I need that. I need to, sc- to scream while I'm, when I'm fucking doing some type of exercise, bro. Because I feel like it feels good. But eventually, uh, 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 hopefully, I could make myself like a little like private gym. But you will, bro, in the future. Yeah, but th- with that being said, guys, that does conclude the regular segment for you guys. Uh, we're gonna get on, a l- get on a little break, let the camera uh, cool down, and by the time you hear our beautiful voices, you're gonna be it's, 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 it's gonna <laughs> be it's gonna be uh, your favorite segment. So, with that being said, uh, get your snacks, get your drinks, get your blankets, get your headphones, shut out the lights, and. Enjoy the fucking show. So we're back from our little, you know, scheduled break. And, you know, like I said, guys, just sit sit back and enjoy because I, I feel like it's going to be a good, good, good favorite segment for y'all. But I, I'm going to start it off. Uh, So a couple days ago, the eclipse did happen, right? And then people were going crazy. Some people were like, like talking about it and shit. I think I know what you're talking about. But recently, some woman... Ended up killing her entire family because of the eclipse. Wait, no, that's not what I was talking about. What the fuck did you think I was talking about? No, nah, completely different. I thought we were going to talk about how when the eclipse happened, there was a lot of sightings like in the sky and shit that were going oh, no, on. Oh, no, 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 not that, not that, not that. When I see videos like that, I just think it's probably fake or it's probably not nothing that big of a deal. Because mm. nothing usually comes out of it. We just see it. And that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Nah, but dude, this is crazy, bro. Some woman literally killed the entire family, bro, because of this shit. But her name was Danielle Ayoka Johnson. And um, she was an astrology influencer. She basically believed in crystals, spirituality, yeah. all that type of stuff. And you guys could believe whatever you guys want. I personally don't believe in, like, the crystals, all that stuff. But... You know, she was she was into that. Yeah. And uh, she was a self-proclaimed healer. Mm. And she lived with her boyfriend. And his name was Jayin Shenny or Jayan Shenny. He was an Air Force mechanic. And he and she had two daughters, a nine year old and um, nine or eight year old and uh, eight month year old baby. I mean, eight month ba- uh, old baby, bro. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to get too, too like, graphic with it and stuff, but I, just in case people are sensitive with true crime cases, because most of my stuff today, or well, all of my stuff today, are true crime cases. But, yeah, and her neighbors described her as, like, just a pretty reserved person. She didn't really, like, talk to anybody. She never said hi to her neighbors. People just said that she was just quiet. And nobody knew that she was a healer. And she was specifically trained in over 10 different alternative healing methods. And it was a certified... Reiki or Reiki master teacher and Reiki or Reiki 
uh, basically means the universal life energy and it's an ancient healing method that manipulates energy flow in the body some spiritual shit yeah and like i said whether you guys believe in this stuff like you guys could let me know what you guys think but she was concerned about the the, the whole solar eclipse like she was uh she thought something was gonna happen or something. yeah so she said that whenever whenever there's an eclipse it's times of uh spiritual warfare is a lot of bad things happening and uh her saying that you basically have to pick a side on which side you want to be on, right? Yo. And, and before before the eclipse, before the murder, she was tweeting out some like really, really creepy, disturbing things. I'm going to pull them up right now. So this is one. It says, wake up, wake up. The apocalypse is here. Everyone who has ears, listen. Your time to choose what you believe is now. If you believe a new world is possible for the people uh, RT now. I don't know. Oh, retweet now. Uh, there is power in choice. There is power in choice. Repost to make the choice for the collective. That's one tweet. And then another tweet. These are the ways they have been programming us with lies. Look at these to look at these to understand the agenda. This is real. This is spiritual warfare. So basically, just a lot of stuff. Basically talking about spiritual warfare and like how it's like there's a deeper reason as to why this, the the eclipse. whole thing is happening, yeah. yeah. And when the day of the eclipse happened, uh, it happened around, like, the incident, the whole murder happened around, like, 3 a.m. in the morning. And Shit. according to neighbors, they, were, they said that they heard arguing with between um her and the boyfriend. And they didn't think anything of it until they just didn't hear nothing else. But basically what happened was they were arguing. A fight ensued. She ended up stabbing him to death, left his body in the apartment, she dipped with their kids and she drove to uh she was driving along Interstate 4 405 which is in Culver City in California. Okay. And she was driving with her daughters and while she was driving she threw her daughters out in the highway while she was driving really really fast like I I believe it was like a 100 miles per hour that she was driving and the 8 month old baby died obviously automatically bro. And thank God the other daughter, the older daughter, did survive this whole thing. But that happened, and then a couple, like 30 minutes later, she ends up uh, driving into a tree. So she basically ends up... And Bro. people don't know if this was... Uh, uh, it, like this was a suicide attempt, or if, or if she just lost control of the car. Mm-hmm. But the point is that she she killed her uh, her, her boyfriend, husband, her boyfriend. husband, and then tried to kill her her kids. Two daughters. Luckily, one of them survived, then ended up killing herself, and it was all all because of this shit. And then there's people saying that she was experiencing spiritual psychosis. Some people say that she was getting into the wrong things that she's not supposed to know. And that's why this happens, manifesting the negative energy. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I, I I personally think that she was just crazy. She like, had a she, fucking manic episode. Yeah, bro. But some people think that the eclipse is what what made her go crazy, and like that's why she ended up doing what she did. But yo, nah. I mean, a lot of people were like like skeptical about the eclipse. A lot of people were saying or expecting shit to happen and like all oh, basically the world to fucking end. Like even us, bro, we were tripping like saying how like shit was happening after the next and yeah, after the bro. next. And bro, I don't know. Yeah, but let me know what you guys think. If you guys think it was a, uh, you know, a manic episode, spiritual psychosis, I, th- or I think she was she was bugging out. But I will leave some type of links to support the family of uh, of the boyfriend and maybe the daughter. I'm going to try to find some links to help because obviously this is a really tragic situation. I didn't even hear that though, the, which is the crazy part. I thought you did, bro. It was like, nah. I, it was, I literally saw it as soon as the incident happened, as soon as the, it, it was on the news. It was on my TikTok feed. Dude, bro, the only th- like I said, the only thing I was seeing was the whole aliens fucking. Some people were even seeing like two eclipses happen at once like the fuck I yeah didn't, but didn't that, that, that look he was just a glare in the camera oh okay okay all right so what i'm gonna talk about right now is baba yaga so that's basically a slavic russian folklore tale okay uh which is about a witch or the witch of the woods grandmother snake and basically it's just a a witch that's pretty fucking scary okay uh she's said to have 
basically long ass legs, but they look like bones. So oh, it's nah. So it basically, it, it's like it seems like she's like fucking OD, like malnourished. That her legs are gonna snap. Like like yeah, or they're literally bones, right? Okay. She also has a uh, metal teeth, and a, a, oh, fuck. she has metal teeth, and then a uh, a nose so long that whenever she goes to sleep, it touches the ceiling. The f- what the fuck? Yeah, bro. So she's she's very like fucking. She also has claws and shit. She looks raggedy, like old and stuff. Mm-hmm. So she's very scary looking. But in the folklore, it's weird because even though she is scary looking and she looks pretty evil, some of the times she's depicted as the total opposite, like a nice person. Yeah. So uh, there's like different tales about her. Okay. And a lot of shit mentioning her. But in every single one of them, she looks fucking horrifying, but like mad scary and shit. I'm gonna show you like okay. pictures of, like I the first look. depictions of uh the Baba Yaga. But okay. basically, like the folklore is that she's a witch in the woods and shit who gives advice. Okay. But people also say that she's evil because she has a hut, right? She has a hut. Like this is this is why I was kind of like uh like um disappointed with this shit because okay. it's more of like a. Like a fairy tale, like folklore. It's a legend, no? Yeah, it's it's kind of like a legend. It's not really like, like oh fuck, like there's this fucking witch out there and okay. shit. Her hut is um literally like a fucking hut, but the only difference is that this one is literally supported by chicken legs, like giant chicken legs. Okay. Yeah, and she has like gates with like a bunch of bones and stuff, and she basically like apparently eats people and shit. Mm-hmm. One of them like saying that she. She basically gives advice to anybody who passes by because she's, like, wise and old and knows a bunch of magic and shit. Yeah. And then others is uh, just certain situations where she, like, kidnaps kids. Wait, so like so, so where, where did um the whole boogeyman came, come from? Because I know some from John Wick, the movie, they called John Wick Baba Yaga and it translates to the boogeyman. So I don't, I don't think it, like, it's probably a different type of, like, like word or some shit or mm. or maybe that's how they fucking said it but like the literal translation is uh grandmother snake the fuck yeah because baba in like i think russian and slovakian German, slovakian it translates to like old lady like old grandma or some shit so that's like one depiction of her but there's others obviously like for example this one right here but it's basically just the old witch in the woods that if you if you don't fuck with her, mm-hmm. then she doesn't do anything to you. But if you fuck with her, then she'll basically kidnap you, take you. You can't really do anything, bro. And she just cooks you and eats you alive. Damn, it's GG's after that then. Yeah, fuck. bro. Cuz like I said, bro, there's a lot of there's a lot of tales about her like one where um there's this like it's kind of like a Cinderella type of thing mm. where um she's the stepdaughter to like royalty or some shit like that and they treat her mad terrible and stuff. They literally Treat her like a fucking maid, or mm-hmm. she she's basically the maid, and um, they end up going into the woods and shit. And since they hated her, uh, they send her to go get like something from the Baba Yaga's like hut. So she went, and she, she fucking uh, she was like, "Okay, come in. I'll give you the I'll give you uh what you need, but you have to uh, basically like do what I ask you to do." Okay. And it was basic chores around the house. It was like clean do everything right and shit and you could have it so basically like in that fairy tale or that folklore the the maid she had like this doll who was like magical or some shit and basically whatever like she did like she told her to do Mm -hmm. the doll would do it so all the chores the doll did it and then the fucking witch was mad surprised with how good this shit was done but she didn't know that the maid had that doll Mm. That would literally do anything that the fucking maid asked the doll to do, right? So everything was done. So she she gave her like a skull, okay, with like glowing fucking eyes, and that was the light that they needed because they were with days without light in their in their. It was, since it was back in the day, medieval times, they had no candles, no nothing in their house. Mm. So they were like, they went for five days, like a week without fucking light in their crib, right? Mm-hmm. So she came back with the skull, which was light. She was looking for light. And it was a skull with glowing eyes that was serving as a light. 
And they came back. They were like, oh, my gosh, you're finally back. Like, we've been with days without fucking light. Where the fuck were you? And she's like, oh, I came back. I'm here with the light now. And they were like, oh, my gosh, you think I'll come in. And before, like, she could come in and shit, the fucking skull lit them on fire. What the fuck? But it didn't do nothing to her. Because she wasn't a bad person. She was... The, the other people treated her like shit. And then uh, in another situation, uh, there was this uh, tale where um, I think a family went into the woods. Uh-huh. And she kidnapped the kids and, like, ate them and shit. God damn. So it's like... Yeah, it's like totally different shit. It's like weird, bro. It's like some... And also some people describe her as a goddess, like Mm goddess-like with wisdom and shit like that. And then other like folklore, they described her as like a fucking evil, like literally like an evil creature who just wants to do evil shit. So it's it's, it's very weird, bro. It's like... Yeah, yeah. It's never like concrete as to who she is or... Or what she does, or what's her reasoning for being in the woods? Mm-hmm. It's more as like she's there, so just be aware of of who she is. Damn, that's crazy. She's there, so beware. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about, right? Uh, this is called the Morrissey family case. I'm not gonna lie, this case is pretty sad and tragic. Morrissey? Yeah, Morrissey. Yeah, and um, I just like I said before, if people are, are sensitive to true crime. I'm just going to give a trigger warning for you guys because I, I do want to give condolences to the families and stuff. And I do want to make sure you guys know that it is true crime and this did happen to real life people and stuff. But this five-year-old boy named Patrick Morrissey saved his mom and helped solve a murder mystery. Five years old? Yes, bro. So this happened to the Morrissey family, which consisted of Linda K. Morrissey and Joe Morrissey. Okay. And uh, they were husband and wife, obviously, and their adopted son, Patrick Morrissey. And they lived in Florida. Uh, I think they lived in, like, the outskirts of, like, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. And this happened on in 2010, April 5th, to be exact. Oh, wow. So, yeah, bro. So, it was a regular night. Joe was uh, dozing off, watching TV in the living room. Uh, Patrick was uh, in the master bedroom sleeping, and Linda she was in her um, she was working in her craft room, just doing her regular work. Yeah. And out of nowhere, she hears like a loud bang coming from the living room, from the front door and stuff. And they realize that they're about to be victims of a home invasion. And at gunpoint, the robber tells Linda and Joe, "You're gonna take me to an ATM, and you're gonna give me." Five hundred dollars, and while all this go- all this noise is going on, Patrick ends up waking up. But him being five years old, he's petrified. He doesn't want to. W- he doesn't like want to go to see what the fuck is going on. He just stays in the bed in shock, and then he hears nothing no more. So they left to the ATM, and it seems like for a long time that he's just waiting there, just waiting to hear his dad's voice, his mom's voice. They come back into the house, and he hears their voices. He was about to run to them. But like him seeing them being pushed in the in the master master bedroom, just you know, he just stayed still, and he saw that his parents had a, a towel over their head, and that uh, they were basically tied up. Yeah. So he, they couldn't really do anything. But his dad, he he had kneeled beside him and basically told told the son gently, Patrick, just lay down and pretend that you're sleeping. Please do it for daddy, and um, which unfortunately ended up being his last words, because after that. The, the guy, the robber, ends up taking Joe out of the room. He says, yo, you have to come with me. Takes him out the room. He ends up getting uh, stabbed to death. What the fuck? The mom is still in, in the master bedroom with, with Patrick just crying. And before the robbers left, the robber ends up basically pouring like gasoline on the floor and lights the, the house on fire. And during an interrogation with the, the mom, the wife, she said that throughout the entire robbery... The guy was talking to somebody else on a walkie-talkie. So there was two people involved mm. in this whole thing. Since Linda was still tied up at her ankles and stuff with zip ties and her arms, the only person that could save her was Patrick. So he ends up telling Patrick, go to my craft room and get some scissors. Oh my gosh, I got you. Which he does end up getting. He, gro- he grabs the scissors, gives it to her. She's able to cut the bonds off. And they both run out the house and they make it, they make it out alive. Yeah. 
they run to a neighbor's house where uh, the five year old boy is knocking on the door saying how like my daddy's on fire, my daddy's on fire. They call the cops. The cops get there and automatically an, an investigation is going on. They don't know who the robbers were. And during the interrogation of, of Linda, she says that she has a hunch on who it might be. So she says that uh, the person that, who it could be is uh, named Randy uh, Rutador. Rutador Sr. to be exact. And he was um, a tenant from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only reason why she thinks it was him because kind of fit the description. And he, that guy, the, the the tenant, he had prior problems with, with, with them. Fuck. So apparently... Randy, he was gonna sue them because he has to tip off some stairs, so he tries to sue them. And he was, I think, he was in the process of suing them. And also, he had failure to make payments uh, of rent, mm. so they were gonna evict him. Once they told him where he lives and stuff, the detectives go, and when he opens the door, they realize that yo, what the fuck, this guy can't be the guy that she described. Because when yeah. he, they opened the door, he had an oxygen mask on, and he walked with like a limp, and he. It looks like he's in no condition to make a fucking a home invasion. He was looking sick. Exactly. But they still bring him in for interrogation and stuff. And they ask him, where were you this night? What were you doing? Who were you with? Who did you call? He says he was mostly home the, the entire night. Uh, nobody. He didn't call nobody, but his son called him. His son's name is Randy Jr. He said that his son called him for money because he was a, a crack addict. Mm. And then... The dad said that, oh, but he said, nah, he was not going to let that, he was not going to let it slide. Have you ever had any dealings with Mr. Morris, the other being a tenant? Yeah, well, right now I'm, I'm suing him because I fell down the stairs in the house because of lack of repairs. He stopped talking to me because of the lawsuit. When I met him, it seemed like he's over. What time did you come home last night? Uh, I was home most of the night. Did you call anybody? Actually, my son called me. He needed money, but I won't help him. Which son? Uh, Randy Jr. Um, even first off, he's wanted by the law. Secondly, this is a crack at it. So they go get Randy, Randy Jr. They interrogate him. I don't have no connection with this murder. I don't know who did it. I want to clear my name because I did not commit this murder. I did call my dad. You know, he's, he's been a good father. Like, he tries to direct me the right way and I go the wrong way, you know? He, he's really a good man. He's a very hard worker. He's a stand-up guy. And he would never do nothing like this. Honestly, I think you may be involved in it. Okay. That's why we've got to clear the air. And at this point, the investigators are kind of frustrated because they don't know, they don't have no solid leads to anybody. Yeah, no they... evidence, no nothing to lead to a suspect. And then out of nowhere, Randy Sr.'s younger son, Sean, calls the the cops and says i might have something that could help you guys with this investigation mm -hmm. he goes up to the police station goes to the interrogation room and tells them straight up my dad did it yeah and then he said that that morning it was on the news murder in plantation i need this woman woman whatever no. when it gets up to the back porch starts smoking a cigarette and I don't know, if you're family, you get instincts. You're not stupid. You know your family. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I walked out in the back and I said, bro, tell me you had nothing to do with that. And he said, let's go talk to dad. So he goes to confront his dad. And he tells him, yo, did you see the news yeah. this morning? Did you see what happened? And then he's like, he said, you need to shut up because I'll kill you too if I have to. The dad said that? Yes, to his son, his younger son. He asks him, but why? Why did you kill him? Yeah. And his answer was, a dead man can evict me. So he tells the cops all this, right? And the cops are like, all right, how the fuck are we going to believe you? How do we know that you didn't do it? Yeah. And then he was like, all right, g give me give me a wire. Uh, I, I could give me two hours with him. I'll get him to confess to the to the whole thing. He they end up putting a, a recording device in like, a, in like a key. He goes to confront his dad. His dad ends up uh, confessing. confessing to everything. He says that that night that Rennie Sr. goes to Rennie Jr.'s home the dad knows that his son is desperate to make his dad proud and he that he loves his dad so he's willing to do anything to make him proud so he goes to his son's house he gives him a hundred dollars worth of of crack he tells him to smoke it so he smokes it and then after that he tells him that i have a customer's address that we could go rob and get some cash and then 
Sean says that at that point, you're not talking to my brother no more. You're talking to a crack addict who's willing to do anything. So basically, he turned into a- Randy Senior and manipulated Randy Junior by giving him by basically feeding into his his Bro, crack addiction, t- turning him into a crack addict to to rob uh rob and kill Joe, for his personal like uh, what's the, I guess personal vendetta. And um, yeah, bro, he ends up confessing to all that, and Randy Junior ends up getting, I believe, forty years in prison, and then Randy Senior ends up getting uh, the death penalty. Yeah, bro. Fuck my bitch. Yeah, bro, but like, like I said, bro, all all this shit was manipulation at his, at his finest, bro. Bro, OD, bro, that's fucking crazy. The fact that like, that's how you know toxic. Like parent sh- parenting is like at another level, bro. Yeah, bro, and it's crazy too. I saw, I saw like um, I think it was reporters interviewing him outside a outside his house, I believe, and then he says, "Oh, I love my son. Um, he, I know he's innocent. This and that. I'll stick by his side this whole time." He's my son. I love him to death, and I'm gonna support him to the end. But meanwhile, he's putting the blame on him and basically manipulated him to to yeah to do, the, do it. Yeah, bro, made him do his dirty work. Basically. Yes, yes. Motherfucker, bro. Yeah, bro. And also, if it wasn't for Patrick, the five-year-old, the mom would have died. They would have both died, and nobody would have figured out who it was. Yeah, bro. Yo. That's fucking crazy, though, how, like, the kid was, like, smart enough to, like, do that shit under pressure. Yeah, and it was also sad, too, bro, because I was looking at the interrogation of the kid, and he was, the way he spoke about it was, like, because since he's so young, he probably doesn't get what, what the fuck happened. But he was just explaining how, yeah, uh, the robbers put a gun to my mommy and daddy's head. Uh, they were screaming and stuff. The detective was like, yo, you're a real hero. And he was like, yeah, my mom, my mommy said that. And then there was also, they were saying how he started experiencing some sort of PTSD. Cause, yeah, because um, he, he started asking like, oh, where's, where's daddy? Where's daddy? Or every time he sees an airplane, he says, oh, my daddy's up there. He's going to come back down eventually. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's the thing like that people don't see about true crime and shit like the aftermath, like the mm-hmm. yeah, the like, aftermath basically like of the families and shit and all of that, bro. Cause yo, that shit's mad traumatizing, bro. Which kind of leads into like the shit I'm gonna talk about. So mine is involving like a break in, and also uh, like a family member being devastated after the whole thing happening and shit. Fuck. So first, I'm gonna show you a nine one one call. Okay. And then I'm going to get into it. All right. I don't remember All right. So on November 8th, 2010, okay. Jennifer Pan, she called 9-11, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the 9-11 call. So, uh, <clears throat> so that was Jennifer Pan, right? Uh-huh. So, before I get it, yo, that scared the shit out of me, bro. Yo, that's, that's fucking disturbing what I, what's after. That's fucking weird. Wait, what? Anyways, nah, like, what just started playing, bro? What the fuck started playing? Nah, there's like something sad and disturbing at the same time. Just, the. Uh, Patty Nelson 911 call from the Club Mine high school shooting. Oh my gosh, bro. But, anyways, um, all right, uh, so that was Jennifer Pan, right? Mm hmm. Before I get into her, yeah. she was the one who was calling 911. Yeah, you yeah, obviously yeah. heard her dad screaming as well. Yeah. I'm gonna give a li- little, like, backstory until how happened? everything led up to, to that? That, one, that one call, right? Uh huh. So, uh, it started off in Canada. It was. Bic Pan, Han Pan, which was his her mom and her dad, right? Mm-hmm. They moved to 1979 to Canada, 
because they were refugees. Eventually, in 1986, they gave birth to Jennifer. In 1989, their second child, which was Felix, right? So they were coming up and shit, uh, working hard ass jobs. They worked at like an auto parts factory or manufacturer. Um, and they were just very, very hard working, bro. They eventually saved up for a crib. They ended up driving nice ass cars, a Benz, a Lexus. Damn. So they were pretty successful, bro. Mm-hmm. Bro, from nothing, bro. Literally from nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So kind of like a happy ending type of, like, you expect a happy ending yeah, to come, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So with all this hard work and shit, they were <clears throat> obviously expecting so much from their kids. So they ended up becoming very, very strict parents. People would call them tiger parents, which is basically like a form of parenting where, like, you're on top of your kids and you're very, very controlling of your kids. Everything, like, that they do, bro, you're basically on top of them. Like, controlling as fuck. That's what they call them, tiger parents. And they just had a lot of huge expectations on the kids, always, like, trying to make sure they're doing their best and stuff. Felix, he ended up becoming somebody who, like, designs cars and shit. Fuck. And become became very successful. He went to a good college. Only reason being is because his dad wanted him to. So he probably never wanted to do that. Yeah. He was just forced kind of because his, his parents. And Jennifer, she was also doing exceptional. She learned how to play the piano at four years old. Um, She was also into, like, other instruments and shit. She played the flute. And she trained very, very hard in ice skating. They just thought that both of their kids were like these prodigy childs doing mad good in school. They're going to become very successful because of what they're doing now and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're going to go into good colleges and obviously become something crazy, right? Or something successful. But in all reality is that Jennifer was never actually like a prodigy prodigy child. Or she was never smart. She was just an average student, bro. She would get 70 averages, basically like a C. Okay. And she was just lying her whole time about... This whole time, she was lying about her grades that she was getting. So she was faking her grades. She was uh, forging her, her um, report cards and basically just changing her grades to straight A student, showing them to her parents because she didn't want them to be disappointed and stuff. So she was just like lying crazy about her, her school and shit, right? And at the time, she was going to Mary Ward Catholic School, and she ended up getting kicked out because she wasn't smart enough. And her parents didn't know about that? No, so they they knew about that, right? And obviously, she was like, all right, yeah, I got to turn up and stuff. I got to start doing better and shit. And she was always monitored, like, constantly, like, being looked at and shit, specifically because of the whole thing that happened. Mm Mm-hmm. They wanted to make sure that she was doing her she was doing her shit. She was doing her shit. So she would get picked up from classes. All of her extracurriculars were constantly being watched. And everything that she did, bro, like they they had a say in it and they had to do whatever she had to do whatever they said. But one of the biggest things was like she couldn't interact with boys basically. They kind of knew that was coming, bro. So she, they didn't want her to have boyfriends. They didn't want her to have no guy friends. Like, basically, boys were off limits. It's like they were distraction or something? Yeah, like, they thought that that would basically, like, ruin everything. Her whole future and shit. Like, a distraction. Okay. And <clears throat> that means that she wasn't allowed to know school dances. No, like, anything outside of school that yeah, involved. So she, she wasn't allowed to have fun. Yeah, bro. So she was basically, like... I wouldn't say like a prisoner in a way, you know? Yeah, yeah, that is a prisoner. Fast forward, she's obviously going to go to to college, right? Yeah. So she had earlier gotten a like um scholarship, a co- like a college letter of acceptance oh, okay. from Ryerson University. And basically like it was all good, she was hype, whatever, she was going to go to that college, right? But then she was she ended up failing calculus. So she failed one of her classes during her senior year, which basically ended up making the university. Reject her? Reject her. They sent her, like, a take-back letter, like, yeah, we, you're, you're a dub. Like, we can't take you in anymore. Obviously, she didn't want her parents to find out again, right? And it turns out that she didn't only just fail calculus. She ended up dropping out completely from high school. 
what the fuck? Their dad is like, all right, cool. You're going to go to a university, and I want you to be a doctor. And obviously, she didn't want to be a doctor. She didn't even think that she was going to become anything in school related because she wasn't really, like, even going to school or even that smart in general, right? Yeah. So he's like, all right, fine. Like, if you don't want to be a doctor because of, like, all the cutting people open, whatever, just be a pharmacist. And she's like, cool. So what I'm going to do is my plan is that I'm going to go to Ryerson University for two years, and then I'm going to transfer to the University of Toronto. Mm Mm-hmm. Right, so that's her plan. She's gonna go to this college for two years and shit, and then after she's gonna transfer. But keep in mind, this is all a lie, bro. Yeah, cause she's fucking. She didn't even. Out. She didn't even finish high school. Yeah, so this is all a fucking lie that she's trying to keep up to her parents. Yeah. She purchased actual textbooks, uh, and she would basically watch uh, documentaries and would take actual notes, bro. So basically, like what we do now, she would do that and say that this shit is for school. What the fuck? Yeah, bro. So she was basically faking this whole life that she was actually going to school, bro. And she was getting all this money by working at a restaurant and teaching piano on the side. So that's how she could afford basically the life she was faking and shit. So the two years ended up passing by. And they're kind of like, all right, like... When's the graduation ceremony? No, it takes four years, right? Oh, no, because she was going to transfer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So... She ended up tra- transfer, like saying like, oh, uh, the two years are up, whatever, I'm going to end up transferring, right? So what she says is like, oh, the University of Toronto is far. I think the commute is going to be too much and shit. Uh, you think it's possible if I move um, with a friend over there, Topaz? And basically the parents were like, okay, it's cool. You know, you're right. The commute is very, very far, but we want you to finish your studies. So go do it, right? The whole time... <laughs> She just lies about everything. It's hard to keep up with her fucking lies. <laughs> but basically, she ended up lying about going to Topez's house. She actually ended up trying to live with her boyfriend. Oh, so the whole friend thing was a lie. Yeah, the whole friend thing was a lie. Yeah, you see so many... she still wasn't even allowed to have a boyfriend at this time? Yeah, no. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So they still don't know about Daniel, which okay. is the same boyfriend that she has now, right? And she ends up actually moving with her boyfriend, which she lied to. She lied to her boyfriend saying that her parents said that it was okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And that she had told them that she's living with him. So he's like, okay, cool. We're living together now, whatever. And basically, some time passed and stuff. And they obviously were, like, trying to go over there and, like, kind of visit her in a way, you know. So she ended up saying that, like, to prove a little bit more... She was saying how, like, she started working at the hospital. Okay. And uh, she was working with, like, a, I think it's, like, a blood bank or something like that called Sick Kids. And they were saying, yo, you know what? Like, it, since we want to, like, oh, we want to see where you work at. Like, this shit about to be cool and stuff. Like, yo, you think we could drop you off? So she's, like, obviously fucking freaking out. She's like, oh, I guess. Yeah, it's cool. So they take her to the fucking hospital. And as soon as they get to the fucking hospital, she, like, books it out, out the car. Like, she gets the fuck out of the car fast as hell. When she got out, the parents were, like, obviously confused and shit. So they run after her saying, yo, like, where the fuck are you, right? Yeah. And she ends up just, like, dipping and hides, bro. The whole time she ends up hiding in the fucking emergency room, just hiding in, like, a little secret spot. And, like, she doesn't come out. Obviously, the parents are like, all right, bro, like, let's just fucking leave. Yeah. She ends up leaving and shit. And this is when they start getting suspicious about it. Because they're like, yo, bro, like, do you even really work here? So that's when they decide that they're going to call her, her friend Topaz. Okay. To to see if she's actually living there. Because they're already suspicious about, like, the whole situation. Because they feel like she's lying. They call. Topaz is like, yeah, they he she she never lived here with me. Fuck. Knowing this and stuff, they obviously confront her. And that's when she she confesses, but she semi confesses. So she says, Yes, she doesn't work there as a sick kid. She doesn't work at the hospital. And she wasn't going to the University of Toronto. Is this bitch like a compulsive liar, bro? Bro, that's what it sounds like, right? Yes. Bro, everything she lies about, bro, she she hasn't told the truth once. Yo, I feel like she is, but it also stems from the fucking parents, too, being the fucking strict assholes. Yeah, bro. You know what's crazy? Like, 
fucking this is so many fucking lies that i'm literally starting to believe like like bro i don't even know what the fuck is facts and what the fuck is not facts you know what i'm saying yeah. but um whatever so eventually jennifer uh she ended up reconnecting with like a childhood friend his name is andrew right mm -hmm. and andrew i guess at the time he was having problems with his parents as well and he just said it like like kind of like randomly and like a joke in a way he's like bro i swear to god i would kill my parents okay okay which sparked Her, jennifer to say i want to kill my parents too the idea that maybe life would be better without my parents. She eventually also gets back with Daniel, her original boyfriend, and they both come up. Now they both come up with a plan to get Hitman and basically kill both of her fucking parents. Then, after they die, the parents get killed. They'll sell the house, collect the money from the property and stuff, and they could go live happily forever after. So, now the plan forms, right? So, they end up hiring these three... Well, two guys at the time, right? It was some guy called Lenford, Craw Lenford Crawford, David, and then some guy comes out of nowhere. His name is Eric, right? Okay. What the plan was is that they were going to go in the house. They were going to break into the house and shoot both of her parents. Mm -hmm. That's what happened? Yeah, so it's going to go into now the 9-11 call. So, <laughs> first of all, a quick fact is that the guy who was setting up the, the Hitman team or whatever, he says that, you know, I usually charge $20,000, but I got you with a family family, a family discount. discount. It's going to be 10000 So, it was already on some crazy shit. So, on November 8th, that's when they decided that the plan is going to happen. That whole day was just a regular ass day. The dad ended up going upstairs to to sleep, and then the mom was um, downstairs just watching TV. I think right. So she snuckily waited till nine thirty p.m. She went to the door and like unlocked it. That's when she was saying good night and shit, saying good night to her, her mom and stuff. And then you just see uh the light in one of the rooms in the house flick on and off twice. That's a sign. That's a sign. She had also sent a text to David, which was one of the hitmen, saying VIP access. They go in, ask for all the money, tied her to a banister, which is like a fucking pole, and shot her parents after. And you could hear the screams of her father. Yeah, but and the, the, but like the way she sounds, it sounds like she was like not behind all this stuff. That's what she's... Exactly. Exactly. But hold on. Chill. Chill, chill, chill. So, so yeah, chill. That's, that's what's the crazy part. So whatever they, they, uh, they hear the dad screaming and stuff. Even a neighbor saw him, a bunch of people called the cops and shit. There was a lot of fucking witnesses and he was taken to the hospital, the dad. Mm -hmm. So the mom died, Fuck. but the dad, he was induced in a coma. So he was just in a coma. He didn't die. Right. So he was in critical condition, but he was basically, like, close to dying, right? Yeah. And then uh, she was taken in for, um, like, Question. interrogation and questioning. She was literally showing no signs of, like... Remorse. No, like, no signs of, like, fuck, I just lost my parents, bro. No sign of grief. Yeah, like, she was just, like, regular, right? So she was immediately put under investigation. There was somebody following her at all times, bro. Like, a detective literally trying to see her every move because she was... She was under suspicion, bro. How could she have called 911 while she was tied? Okay, yeah. She said that she was tied to a pole and her hands were tied as well. Yeah. And how the fuck did they break into the house? It's Keep in mind, it's a fucking break-in, right? How the fuck are they going to leave money in, in plain sight? And they're also going to leave a Benz, a Lexus when the keys were... On top of the counter. A bunch of stuff was also in the house. Nothing was taken. Nothing was looked through. Everything was still intact, bro. The only thing that happened was... They got... Like, they got killed. Yeah. So, it, it didn't make sense to the cops, bro. Mm -hmm. How the fuck is this a break-in if everything is still intact, right? Yeah. So, uh... They were investigating her and shit. And then on November 12th, 
the dad wakes up from the coma. Oh, okay. The dad wakes up from the coma and says that she was in, she was in on it. Jennifer Pan, his daughter. That's when the cops are like, "Wait a minute, what?" He's saying that yeah. So he was uh, how when when they were there, they were tied up and shit. Him and uh, his wife. She was walking around with them and talking and discussing the plan, and basically saying like, "Yeah, like, like if they knew them already." So this whole time, the dad saw that Jennifer Pan was the one who fucking did all this shit. So she was reinterrogated, and she said, "Yes, it was me." But I told them to kill me, and they got confused and they killed them. But that when they quickly found out that that was a fucking lie. They had seen so many fucking evidence and so many fucking texts that was saying, no, like, uh, this is the plan. Like, I got you with this amount. They found so many text messages and stuff. So on December 13th, 2014, they ended up getting sentenced to life sentences. And uh, one of them, actually, I forgot his name. I forgot which one it was. He ended up just uh, pleading guilty and he Mm -hmm. only got 18 years. But all of them got life sentences with 25 years. They could go on parole and try to fight to see. Yeah. But they still got to do 25 years first. I did not expect any of this shit, bro. Yeah, bro. So this whole time, bro, we're thinking she's like the sweetest girl. Like their her parents are thinking she's the sweetest girl. She's doing so good in school. She's going to be our prodigy child. She's going to go to this great university. Um, become a doctor or a pharmacist and basically make us proud. But this whole time she was lying about her grades since she was young. She was lying about not having a boyfriend and stuff. And then, yeah, her whole life was a lie. Also, after the whole crime and shit, it turned out that her dad, like, was never the same and shit. I mean, of course, bro. He was in a coma and then he just witnessed his, his daughter try to kill him. His wife died. His wife died in front of him. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be the same either. So he uh, he he doesn't work anymore. He lost the ability to work and shit. He's also like constantly having PTSD. Nightmares all the time. Like basically just like completely messed Fucked, up, bro. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is one of the this is one of the craziest cases that I've seen in a while. It's happened a really long time ago, but it just resurfaced, and I'm pretty sure uh, it's on Netflix right now. Mm-hmm. I think it's trending as number one. Uh, it's like I a think, doc? I think it's a movie documentary kind mm-hmm. of thing, but yeah. That's crazy, bro. It's crazy, bro. It is crazy. I don't know how fucking somebody could lie so much. Like, it, it kind of reminded me a, a bit of me for a second, bro. When What, the way you lie? When I wasn't telling my mom that I wasn't going to college. Oh, okay, I can see that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, nah, but damn, bro, this bitch fucking lied so much. that She lied so much and got her, and got her family killed. Yeah, bro. I hope I said it good, not like a robot. I think you did, bro. You just said mad information that uh, that it was OD, but like it was good. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. Like When I take notes and stuff, like I just got everything, though. Yeah. But it was mad long. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, but um, yeah, bro. That's 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 pretty much all the topics I got. Well, yeah, this, this does conclude uh, y'all favorite segment of the podcast. It was more of a true crime podcast today. Um, but next week we'll if y'all we'll, we'll give y'all some scary shit, some creepy shit. Um, don't worry guys It's not It's not it's Every time Every t- every single episode Is gonna be different Sometimes you're gonna get True crime podcasts w- With us Like when we co- with, our, with our topics Or sometimes you're gonna get Legends scary. Bro You already know And if I uh, Kind of stumbled on the On the story a bit Just uh, correct me Cause I know there was Like some parts that Maybe I said them too soon Some parts I said them Like later I'm talking about the timing and shit uh, Just correct me if you guys want In the comments But I, got, I know I got most of the facts right. A la mala empresa y eso te gustó. Eres niña mala. En la que mi amor es una diabla. Y la como baila. That's a good song, bro. But uh, before we do in the podcast, we always we obviously got to do the Patreon shoutouts and, oh, uh, and also some comment shoutouts. What about... Hey, I don't know. 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, bro. The the little Jaime version. Y waka waka eje, mueve el booty, juega con mi R, waka waka eje, sube la guava, pegas un baby, 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 oh, a la verga. Gosh, bro. Espejito, espejito, que hagan por favor, ese es un espejito. Ah. I don't think you know that whole shit, but I'm pretty sure you, I, 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 I fucking am confident in myself that you know, you, you probably listen to that shit on your own time. I never listen to the whole song, bro. Yeah. I never listen to that song, it's just that everybody spams that shit. On fucking TikTok, my fucking for you pages only that shit, bro. I swear. Uh, shout out to Vanessa Miraz, Aide Rivera, Yubi Rivera, Anaí, Sharon Neils, Alvaro Morales, aka El Ceviche, Andrew Padilla, Stephanie Jimena Rojas, Maria Fernanda Muñoz, Eric Mendez, Ronaldo MD, Esquivela, Eli. FC Cruz seventy six, Angel Garcia, Kerry Carvega, Carverga. Caverga? Kerry Caverga? Is it no more Ro Rosa Melano no more? Damika Bucoa, Elias Luera. Uh, it's, it's different, bro. Uh, Elias Luera, Juan Medina, Jesus Chavez, Dragon 430, Isabel Adilen, Maribel Alera, Elizabeth Carrillo Diaz, Lexi underscore Lou, Nalgas Gordas. I mean, what the, <laughs> what the fuck is that somebody's name, bro? Did they change it to that? Yeah, that's. Bro, you're trolling at this point, bro. Nah, nah, shout out to that motherfucker, bro. Shout, shout out, out to, to you. Shout out to Nargas Gordas. Bada. What the? Hey, yo, hams, yo. Hams, 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 hams. Anyways, go. Eres ni llamada, te gusta mi amor. Anyways. Danny Chavez, Alex Manriquez, Jocelyn Harrison, Nathan Herrera, Jose Aguilera, Jose Jaime Alvavera, Abel Mendoza, ZF Zeus, Miguelito, Will Jimenez, Shalom underscore 16, Jennifer Montelongo, and that space guy. We fucking love ya. By the time this episode's out, uh, we had already dropped um, a Patreon reaction. We reacted to Ravenous. It's like an old vintage movie. I guess you could say thriller horror movie. And it was uh, it surprised me. I thought I was going to be fucking ass. But... It was really good. So if you guys wanna, if you guys are iffy about the Patreon, I, I know whenever you go onto the Patreon, you could you could play like a little like thirty second to like a minute um, snippet of the actual episode, so like you guys can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys can see what the fuck is like is up with the Patreon to see to see if like we're fucking doing some dumb shit or if it's like worth it. But we do not do no any cut reactions on there. It's a full cut. You'll get the full movie, full show, whatever it is. Trust me, next, the, the movies that are incoming with the reactions, bro, are about to be fucking crazy. Some probably I haven't even watched because they are an OG. Some are OG movies and shit, but just fucking be a Patreon, guys. Yeah, bro. Shout out to... <laughs> So, somebody gotta tell that motherfucker he can't sing, bro. You can't sing. I'm gonna be the first one to tell you. Bro, somebody send this to Lil Jaime. I don't give a fuck, bro. You, you can't sing, bro. Stop fucking singing, bro. Nobody wants to fucking hear you sing. If you wanna sing, go, bro. Go to the La Voices kids so they can fucking X you the fuck out, bro. Get that motherfucker out of here, bro. <laughs> fucking door is that way. Shout out to Wizzy720. Uh, you, uh, you just want a happy birthday shout out. Your birthday is on April 11th. Uh, it did pass already. So I just want to give you a, a happy late birthday. And I hope you spend it amazing with your family or your friends or whatever. We fucking love you. I think you must. Uh, thank you so much for supporting. Uh, here's a comment shout out from uh, Pacho Bo 9020. Uh, 9021 No no I was almost saying 9021 No but it's not that <laughs> <laughs> Yo Travis Scott Yeah but it's 9021 Oh Um She said Y'all ain't unnoticed anymore LOL Damn So shout out to you my boy And then also uh, Shout out to Taryn underscore it uh, Underscore up 81 mm. You said you want a shout out For your wife Cause her birthday is on April 19th The day that Yo, drop merge, bro. Yes, bro. And also, his birthday is April 14th. Damn, y'all mad close to each other. That's fire. But shout out to you, my boy. Your name is Taryn. Oh, your name is Josue. Josue Taryn. So shout out to you, my boy. I got you real quick. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Josue. And Diana and Wheezy. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Yo, nah, no funny shit. Like, guys, if you guys want us to sing, like, I don't know if it's going to be annoying, right? But 
If y'all want a birthday shout out with the singing shit, like we got ya. But only if you say you want it, bro. We're not gonna do it. Facts. If you don't want it, bro. Facts. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to you, Josue. Uh, your birthday did pass. Happy late birthday to you, and happy early birthday to Diana, because uh, this drops on the 18th. Facts. Wishing you guys both uh, a bunch of love, appreciation, and I guess enjoy your fucking bir- birthdays, bro. Yeah, I hope you guys. I hope you guys spend it good, bro. Uh, shout out to Eddie underscore Flacco. Uh, you said you want to shout out, uh, cause you, you say you like, um, you like the videos, you love us and to keep up the good work. Damn. Shout out to you. Damn, I've been feeling the love lately, guys. I'm not going to lie. That's just kind of been getting to me. Like, shout I out to, love ya. shout out to La- Laura, uh, Jaramillo, 7427. You say, hey guys, I just start. I just started following you guys because of the Instagram reels. I'm so invested in the. Oh, I'm so invested in your guys' scary segment and conspiracy theories. Love you guys. Love your guys' rawness. Keep it up. P.S. Babiaga. And then sure, um, for that. shout out to River underscore Valley or oh, underscore underscore Valley. Mm. Always listen to y'all while working. Thank you for getting me through my night my night shift. Uh, y'all keeping y'all keeping me distracted. Uh, y'all keeping me distracted from thinking of my grandma. Cause I heard grandma did pass away recently. Damn, rest so in peace. My condolences, and thank you for supporting us. Facts. Do you notice me? Do you notice me, baby? Do you notice me? You just take a roll with me. Uh, I don't know. I have two more. Uh, the, the real, the real. Shout out to the real Fibre. Uh, I appreciate you making the pot the podcast episodes even when you're tired. I was happy to get a, a notification of a new episode to watch when I was at work. We've been watching y'all since episode six. What? So shout out to you. Shout out to you, bro. Bro, episode six, bro. I don't think the podcast was good in episode. <laughs> nah, bro. It was like it was. Those episodes were fucking rough, bro. But shout out to you for for. They're still they're still like um, like private, right? Yeah, they are, bro. I think I might watch it just cause. Uh, and then shout out to the last one. It's a Apple Podcast review. Uh, the name is Zay Quirt Quirty U I O P. It says I used to hate the personal segment, but I realized that y'all just friends catching up, talking about life, and I didn't know that there was Mexicans in New York. Rates rates of five stars. Damn, bro. Damn. Yo, I honestly, bro, like the 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 people who like be changing over to like the full episode rather than just the scary segment, segment. That shit feels mad good, bro. Yeah, bro. Fucking I mean, love we, ya. we always preach that, bro. Like even even if people complain about uh the the scary segment or whatever you want to call it, just being an hour long or something like that or or most of it just being us yapping. That's why we leave timestamps. Specifically for those people, yeah. And then if they keep watching, eventually they're probably gonna get bored of watching uh, just that part. They'll be like, ah, let's see what the fuck the rest is about. Yeah, and you know, like if you guys just want to stick to the scary stuff, it's completely fine as well. Like, yeah, we we love you guys regardless and shit. You guys are supporting regardless if you guys only watching scary shit, or if you are watching the whole podcast. We love you guys regardless. Thanks. Well, with that being said, guys, go show love to the new channel. We're going to be posting on there. And we will be posting some old banger episodes that we recorded back then that didn't get love, that should have got love because they're fucking amazing. Uh, they're, 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 editing, they're edited really, really good. Go show love to those. Go show love to the Patreon, our Instagrams, everything, bro. We fucking love y'all. Uh, we'll see you on episode 104. And uh, yeah, guys, with that being said, uh, it's been your host, George, a.k.a. Messiah Messiah. It's been your host, Ricardo, a.k.a. The Ricardo. And do not let this podcast go. <laughs> do you notice me? Do you notice me? Hey, do you notice me? I notice Oh